Hey, what's up, people? Who knew uh, I'd be doing more than one video in a day? <laughs> sure, though, not me. But I guess I gotta, you know, address some things, or I feel that, yeah, just gotta address some things. <clears throat> Excuse me. That just been fucking nagging the shit out of me. So today's video, or the second video, title is Political Infantil Infant Infantilism. God damn infantilism, pretty much childlike behavior. And we know those of us with the non-smoothed out brains and can call balls and strikes without getting deranged because one side is our favorite side and the other isn't. When people can actually sit down objectively and look at things. Not add emotion to it, not add your bias to it. Just sit down and objectively look. A lot of people can't do that for whatever reason. I guess it might be just a human nature thing, you know, just what people do. But it just gets to the point where it hurts them and it doesn't even know. When people start supporting things that go against their own interest like why why would you support something that goes against your own interest is it because you feel that if you support this thing the other team or what you view as the other side will lose and is winning your whatever hypothetical battle with your your enemy or your perceived enemy is that a more important than getting the right thing done? Probably. Probably. Most likely. All right? But when it comes to politics, it's like sports. Take, for example, uh, you had the Giants and Eagles play, all right? Two horrible teams by record standards. Uh, today the Eagles are two, four, and one. The Giants are one and six. Horrible, but when you have pe you know, when you bring in the sports mindset into things like politics, and you have two sides with horrible records, <laughs> people will literally just shout from the rooftops how good their side is and how bad the other side is. It's like. It's like saying, oh, the Eagles are a Super Bowl caliber team as opposed to the Giants when the Eagles before the Giants game was 1-4-1. and one. That's not Super Bowl caliber by any means, especially, you know, well, before we get too deep into the team shit, but that's not Super Bowl caliber. That's like saying people saying the Giants are a Super Bowl caliber team despite reality. One in five, now one in six. But people bring this logic to politics. They bring it into an arena where things matter. They don't sit down and objectively look at anything. So with that being said, I didn't watch the stupid ass presidential debate. It's a waste of time. You got two Republicans running against each other, pretty much trying to be more Republican than the next guy. Biden is pretty much a Reagan Republican, and we all know how wonderful Reagan was. <laughs> he wasn't. Trump being further right Republican, worse than Reagan. Worse than, like, far right of a lot of presidential Republicans, but that's the trend nowadays, I suppose. You know, let's let's appeal to the the worst parts of the country. And we know Trump is bad. For some reason, people must feel that you must mention how bad Trump is if you're gonna speak about Biden. I don't know why. That's like me having to if I point out 
the sky is blue, I must also point out how the clouds are white. Like, it's, you know what color the sky is, you know what color the clouds are, it's just that fucking ridiculous. I don't understand, you can't critique or bring up facts about one side, then you get this, which is a real thing, Trump derangement syndrome, that just kicks in, and people, oh my God, what you got? You got to mention Trump, but Trump this and Trump that. We know he's an idiot. We know he'll do anything to seem popular and get a vote, and he's surrounded by the Council of Fucking Doom. So, if we know that, why, when critiquing the supposed left, which the Dems aren't left at all, the neo fucking liberals. And if you don't know what a neoliberal is, it's not a good thing. <laughs> it's not a good thing. You know how, you know, you, you had the Republicans or people from the right, goddamn liberals. Sometimes they actually had a a point. Sometimes they had a point. Just like when, you know, you call fucking conservatives, like fascists or Nazis, there's a point to it. Authoritarians, there's a point to it. But when the right, like, Fucking liberals, goddamn look. They uh, sometimes, just sometimes, a broken clock is right twice a day. They have a point. So, with that being said, people really need to stop getting derangement syndrome on either side, especially when it comes to this fucking every four years, the the, the presidency shit. Your local elections affect more things than every four years. But then you still have the loons. Oh, my God, what they're going to run the country. Honestly, <clears throat> they, the presidency doesn't run fucking anything at all. You live in an oligarchy. You really live in a republic or a democratic republic. Any of these things. Because there's studies done. Showing that any time legislation is put up, unless it helps rich people, the elite, the 1%, whatever you want to call them, corporations, multinational corporations, any time legislation is brought up, it has to help them first before it helps the regular people. Now, when things like Medicare for All was put up, Nobody can. Do you see anybody running on that? You got Biden wanting to bring back the Republican health care plan of uh, the ACA, then bring back the mandates, which forced you to buy horrible, expensive health insurance. And on the other hand, you have the Republicans pretty much wanting to dismantle the already crappy health care system, which would in turn just make it worse or go back in time before the ACA and then you just take away pre-existing conditions and all that, which people laud the whole pre-existing condition thing, which I guess is nice until, you know, when, when we get to the rub, oh shit, I can't afford my premium. Great. You have insurance from one of the hundreds of horrible insurance companies, one of the hundreds of horrible middlemen between you and the doctor and getting treated, you got to pay the tax. But you have pre existing conditions included, so great. People don't look at the whole thing. Once again, political infantilism, my team, their team, the other team wants this, my team is, yeah, and I hate the other team so much, I'm going to accept the whole force mandate to get horrible health insurance because just because they had it pre-existing conditions to when you ha when you get health insurance it doesn't have a price control in it so you're paying five thousand dollars out of pocket twenty five hundred dollars out of pocket more than your more than what you pay for your car insurance like if you got into an accident your deductible is like what five hundred bucks or you you had a mini stroke well your deductible is twenty five hundred bucks now mister I'm sorry. Considering the, the times and the you know the climate where people are now out of work 
uh, their hours are cut if they aren't completely out of work. Uh, not if you if you're a business owner, good luck. You know, small business owner at that. I'm gonna talk about motherfuckers like Shake Shack and Starbucks and McDonald's and shit. But if you're like you know a small business owner that employs less than fifty fucking people, your business is hit now because of the whole COVID shit. But hey, Joe Biden wants to bring back, you know, the ACA and build on it when people wanted a public option. It didn't help the rich, so it didn't get passed. Obama didn't even push for it. So, yeah, people don't think. Now, Everybody's like, oh, shit, Trump is going to destroy the country. He's so bad. Granted, he's bad, but why would he all of a sudden now flip the switch to destroy the country if he gets reelected? I don't I don't understand that. And people are worried about him destroying the country without actually looking or doing any kind of research, right? So... Trump isn't the problem. He's the symptom of a problem. There's a reason Trump won. The Democrats have been so ineffective on purpose, so laissez-faire with your well-being, the country's well-being, for support of their donors, that a dude like Trump won the election. He most likely wasn't planning to win. The other Republicans were so bad and cookie cutter. The GOP base didn't want them. Nobody wanted fucking who who the fuck the Zodiac killer looking motherfucker, Ted Cruz, Jeb Bush. Nobody wanted these fucking assholes. They were too establishment. Trump came in speaking that populist right wing shit, which I don't know what populist right wing even is. That that just seems like an oxymoron to me personally. Because how do you how are you a populist and a conservative? And we still don't know what conservatives actually conserve from their own mouths. But when we look at them, they pretty much conserve shit like uh, you know, racism, uh unfettered capitalism, uh, greed, and shit like that, all right, but Trump was, the shit was going so bad, Trump was able to win, and the only people, only, the only ones who lost were the people, why, because then Democrats turned right around, and now they can fundraise off of Trump being so bad, they may act like he's the worst thing ever, they fast track a bunch of judges for Trump. A bunch. A bunch of judges. While they fear monger about Brett Kavanaugh, remember the whole Me Too thing, and then that died as soon as Tara Reid made an alle- they came out with an allegation against Biden because then the Dems was like, oh, well, we're done with that. It's going to hurt our golden child or our golden fucking grandpa. But with Trump in office, they can fundraise. Off of just straight fear mongering. Oh my God, the other guys are Republican. You got you got to give us money so we can run these candidates and blah, blah, blah. and when you turn around, nothing is done. Nothing at all. Just like when Obama was in office, what happened? He said he would put on a soft shoe to work to go with workers and with union members in Wisconsin and march with those teachers. He did nothing. But nobody said anything. Because it's my team, their team, political infantilism. It was excuses of, oh, the Republicans are stopping him. Republicans did not stop Obama from running out of bombs. They didn't stop him. They, the Republicans didn't get in the way of him actually doing something about DAPL. He let the water pro- the water protectors get their heads cracked. Remember Occupy Wall Street? He let those protesters get their heads cracked and did nothing with that with the momentum of that movement. With all, all the people in Occupy Wall Street would have put voted for him. And he did nothing. And with him pretty much doing nothing and caving because Obama was pretty much the black Reagan. 
uh, they lost a thousand seats. But then instead of people taking a look and actually analyzing why the Democrats under Obama lost a thousand seats, they just made up excuses. They oh well you you were supposed to get out and vote. You had to do this and you and no people aren't obligated to waste their time standing in line to vote for people who aren't doing anything for them, no matter how bad the other guy is. Because you know why? The people that you're voting for are just enablers of the other side. They're not much different. One hand washes the other. That's all it is. One hand grabs your shoulder, the other hand pushes the knife in you. Now, who has the knife and who has the hand on your shoulder? Eh, Well, I guess that could be up for debate. But either way, both sides of the aisle work together and and, the end result is fucking you. And then we have the largest wealth transfer is always fucking happening, especially during the goddamn recession, which just happened. Like under the CARES Act and all that, where Bernie and ALC want to flail their arms and complain about the CARES Act and what was in it, but they voted to pass it instead of actually standing up, putting a hold to it until people got treated better or got, you know, first, I, I guess, like A, before $5 trillion just went to the market, which, you know, why the, the banks were able to just get money as soon as. The market started crashing because TARP. You remember TARP? Where everybody got a couple, like, you know, like a couple hundred dollars in a check or whatever. Now, TARP made it on the Obama admin. I know, I know. God forbid. I told, why didn't you talk about Trump more? Trump is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shut the fuck up. Uh, On the Obama admin, it was put in there where you don't have to, No, there's no voting on whether to give banks money. They just automatically got the funding from the Fed. So that there's your answer for that if you were ever wondering why. And that was a both sides of the aisle thing. One hand washing the other. One hand putting the hand on your shoulder. And the other hand has a knife and it's stabbing you. So, again, as usual, under the current system, you always have boom-bust cycles. right? Just each getting worse and worse. And doubled by situations like this pandemic. Then people over the years doing Obama, Matt, you know, admin and everything, they realized that and it was like, look, why am I voting for this? Well, why? But again, <clears throat> nobody, not, not enough people sat down to go, you know, you're right. Both sides is fucking us. It went right back to, but the Republicans. Republicans do the same thing. The Democrats, when 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 their base starts getting fucked, who they start blaming? Immigrants, Negroes, the Democrats, the liberals. They just and, and and the funny thing is they not they don't even come up with like good fucking you know talking points. There's always some extreme non non existent bullshit. The Dems are coming for your guns. They're gonna tax your guns out of existence. This is why you can't find work because they let a Mexican in and another Republican of that company hide them over you, another Republican. <laughs> so, like, even when the right does it, they have horrible, it's just hard, it's just blatantly just bad lies. But when the Dems do it, the supposed left, the radical left, as the right will put it, they gaslight you. It's a little bit more nuanced and they gaslight you and shit like that. It will be some true sprinkling with gaslight and then they'll usually go, well, you see, that's why you got to vote for us. Then when you vote for them, what happens? Nothing. Then when nothing happens, people say, fuck it, get apathetic and don't vote because they honestly have nothing to fucking vote for on many levels of government any fucking way. Then you get the whole, oh shit, this, this team lost a bunch of seats in the house. So, you know. Oh my God! And then the political infant in, in, infants come in. Oh my God! You were supposed to do this. Why didn't you vote for that? You're the reason why the Republican. No, the Democrats, who are also Republicans, pretty much Republican light. They're pretty much right of center. 
while the while the the GOP is just far right. So you got far right and right of center. And people have been getting fucked, but nobody sits down with a cold ball and strikes about it. It's all of I hate that side and shit like that. But getting back to the main point, getting to the point, we know Trump is bad, right? Trump, he may have called black people niggas, and apparently, so surprisingly, you can just it it only counts for being racist if you just say it out loud, not actually push any policy. So we know Trump wasn't a politician before before his the current presidency, right? So honestly, does anything he say hold weight? No. Yeah, we know about the Central Park Five thing where he still wanted to, like, you know, have him put to death, and after they were found innocent, they, he still he said they must have done something. We know his father, or grandfather, the, the fucking wit grand wizard and everything. Yeah, that you, that's describing a bunch of politicians right now: judges, lawyers, doctors. What's new about that? What what's uniquely bad about that? We have plenty of racist ass presidents. Lyndon Baines Johnson. The only reason he su- he su- passed the Civil Rights Bill wasn't because it was on a ballot and somebody re- like you know motherfuckers going to the voting booth and it was like, well, I'm gonna tick this box for civil rights. No, nah, he didn't want motherfuckers running up in the White House taking shit over. So he passed a watered down bill because it went from a bill for black people to now including every everybody we call a minority. And magically included white women. I don't, I don't understand how white women are my, minority, but yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that happened, right? Yeah, pl- you had Nixon with the fucking welfare queen shit. So I don't understand how Trump is uniquely bad, especially when he's using policies that were enacted by other ad- damn and Republican admins, like him sending jackbooted unmarked van thugs to Portland and abducting people off the street. He couldn't have done that legally without it already being legal in the first like he couldn't have done it before. Like they they wouldn't they wouldn't have went. Because Trump already has his own conflict within the fucking deep state and other shit. They don't like him. They 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 don't like him because he puts a bad face on shit they've already been doing. Whereas the previous president, he was all smiles and sings to you why he goes kills hundreds if not a few thousand civilians in the middle east with drone bombs but then people are crying about well yeah that's bad not saying that's not bad but you know who built the cages we know who already gassed people at the border the biggest thing was obama wasn't separating children he just sent everybody the fuck back after he gassed you and also after uh, you know his admin helped with coups and like in honduras and let places like Haiti get fucked by his Secretary of State Hillary fucking warmongering Clinton after you know he Obama continued to fail imperialistic policies of you know South America, Latin America. That's why you get so many people coming in. And it was people just like it's all Mexicans. No, Mexicans are literally just going back. You had more people from Central, Central and further South America. But Trump is sending the kids at the yeah, it's bad. But when people were get, when you had children getting bombed in uh, the Middle East by fucking Obama, so much so that he ran out of bombs. Where was the outcry? Nobody had anything to say. It was but the Republicans. That's what you got. But the Republicans. That's what you got. So this uh, presidential election, the political infants are trying to pass off. Trump as a unique evil. He honestly isn't. Trump called people names. So so do a lot of races on a daily basis. But see, here's the thing. Trump doesn't have a 40-year plus year track record of passing policies that's actually racist and affecting people. Just for example. Just for example. Now, this dude, like Biden, after he was picked by Obama because Obama couldn't pick another black fucking person to run with him, or he couldn't get the he couldn't get the, the the white vote much, right? 
couldn't, wasn't going to do it. This dude goes, quote, you got the first mainstream African-American who is articulate and bright and clean and a nice looking guy. I mean, that's a storybook, man. Biden in reference to Obama. Now, if anybody else said that, right, if your average white person who wasn't in the office or something, or maybe was a Republican and, you know, actually tagged Republican in the registry, said this, people would be fucking upset. They'd be pissed. Like, how racist is this? Then you get a whole article from the Grio or HuffPost or some going into the history of how bad something like that is in the historical context. But for some reason, if Biden says it, well, that was a while ago, man. You know, it's cool. Trump called people niggas. Wait. So what Biden, the racist shit Biden just said is cool because Trump bad. All right. Then another one. In Delaware, the largest growth in India in, in population is Indian Americans moving from India. You cannot go to a 7-Eleven or a Dunkin' Donuts unless you have a slight Indian accent. That's that's not problematic. Is, is that not problematic? Because I know if like fucking Tucker Carlson said that shit, motherfuckers will lose their minds. Rightfully so. I'm not gonna say is they, they shouldn't, but don't you taste a little bit of hypocrisy here? Another one. Many of my fellow Delawareans were immigrants. They all spoke perfect English. Some had foreign accents, but pointing that out is... Oh, hold on. Yeah, well, that's not really a quote. I don't know why they didn't even fucking add the rest of the fucking quote for that. Oh, here's a famous one, recent. Well, I'll tell you what. If you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, then you ain't black. Now, people did have a problem with it. Then you had the other, but Trump bad crowd, the, the, the TDS motherfuckers, cry about what, but Trump, but Trump, but Trump. But that is like what he just said. He, he effectively said, if you don't vote for me, because I'm effectively making himself the king of blacks. He's the king of blacks. If you don't vote for me, then you ain't black. See, you can call somebody a nigger, right? And it's just out there. It's boom. You ain't got to add anything else to it. It's right there. Then you can have shit like what Biden just said, which is damn near the same fucking thing. It has the same effect. If you ain't, it, it, it dehumanizes you because, you know, not, not now... He he he's the the authority of your blackness. Just like when somebody calls you a nigga, it dehumanizes you. The person using the slur, throwing it at you, think of, thinks of themselves the authority on your worth as a black person. And since you're black, you, you you're nothing, so you're a nigger. Whereas Biden, if you don't vote for me, you ain't black because obviously black people owe him a vote. That's not problematic white guy shit. I, I, I think it is. I, I think it is. Then uh, you pretty much see this one. Mm, I don't know. Because just, just from like, sometimes you got to be aware of your sources. And even when they're right. People, like when uh, Tulsi with the Project Veritas shit. So, yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to skip over that one because that one was kind of eh. Here we go. Biden's comments about the segregation in his kids growing up in the racial jungle. Now, don't tell me about Trump being bad back in the day and that's somehow uniquely bad to versus Biden's horribleness back in the day because i was told this well i well well biden saying that was like 40 something years ago but when trump says something about black people that far back it's a special issue somehow <laughs> but yeah 1977 during a con congressional hearing 
on anti-busing legislation, Biden, who joined with segregationists in his fight, said he wanted to ensure we do not we do have orderly in integration of society and pointed out he was not just talking about education, but all of society. Then he said, unless we do something about this, my children are going to grow up in the jungle, the jungle being a racial jungle with tensions having built so high that it's going to explode at some point. We have to make a move on this. So pretty much he doesn't want his kids growing up in a racial jungle. He don't want Negroes sitting next to, you know. But but that, him saying that is not as bad as whatever the fuck Trump said, despite what Trump said is just he's so stupid, he can't nuance or couch his racism in language. So he just says things right out in the open, which honestly should be people should like that more because they then they'll know where he stands rather than having to decode and go, wait, that sounded problematic. Then sit there and think when Trump says something bad, you don't it, it, it's not a you don't have to do common core in your head to figure out whether it's bad. It's like three seconds. Boom. Oh, shit. That motherfucker's horrible. But when Biden says something, people go, uh, uh, they start hemming and hawing. I don't know. Then especially now, because the presidency and this Biden versus Trump, now you've got the morons on either side trying to, like, I don't know, fluff up, better powder up this, the, the piles of shit. Oh, well, well, Biden is obviously better because he said this. Well, Trump bad. Trump said things that bad and biden said things that are bad but hey you know you, you know biden and that was back in the day and stuff oh also biden using an anti-semitic slur shylock shit i didn't even know that was an anti-semitic slur oh uh, all right here we go Biden said during remarks at the 40th anniversary of the Legal Services Corporation that people would come to him and talk to about talk about what was happening to him to them at home in terms of foreclosures, in terms of bad loans that were being. I mean, the Shylock who took advantage of um these women and men while overseas. All righty, that's a the term Shylock is considered an anti-Semitic slur by the Anti-Defamation League, and Biden was rebuked by the group for using the slur, promote, prompting Biden to publicly apologize for his poor choice of words. But hey, man, Trump bad. Then his comments about poor kids. Ugh. We should challenge the students in these schools. We have this notion that somehow if you're poor, you cannot do it. Poor kids are just as bright and just as talented as white kids. Pretty much pretty much meaning that uh poor white people don't really matter, right? They're, they're non existent for him. Or that even if you're white, you're already wealthier than non white children. Yeah, wealthy kids, black kids, Asian kids, then you know, he tried to clean the shit up. But Poor kids are just as talented as white kids. But Trump bad, right? Trump said things about Mexicans. Yeah, true. Those are bad. Not uniquely bad, though. Let's continue. Oh, yeah. Our, the, the the slight, you know, Dunkin' Donuts shit. All right. His reason we can't hold China accountable for COVID. According to at Joe Biden... Trump can't hold China accountable for COVID-19 because Americans can't distinguish between a South Korean and someone from Beijing. That's... All right. That'd be, that'd be considered racist by today's standards, right? But somehow Trump speaking is uniquely bad. Come on. Come on. C come on. I then then he has a <clears throat> a long history with <clears throat> fuck, a long history of just with fucking segregationists and avid racists and shit. He lauded South Carolina Senator Strom Thurmond, who Biden called one of my closest friends. 
So this dude said he's close friends and he's never taken that back. He's never apologized for it. He never said, maybe I should have thought about that ever, ever. But somehow when you bring this up, the political infants come right back in. But, but what about Trump? Trump said Trump got the racist Steve Bannon. Right here, fucking Biden literally eulogized a dude, Strom Thurmond, an avid racist at his funeral and called him a closest friend. Somehow, but somehow Trump is uniquely bad. I his racism is a unique form of horrid racism that I don't I don't understand how because I like I said Trump is just mask off with it when he's too stupid to couch his shit too fucking dumb to couch it but you can't every time somebody points out Biden's actual fucking racism oh he worked with a black man you mean you mean the you mean the guy Obama who's insanely popular among Black people and other motherfuckers, other quote unquote minorities, and he needed, oh, uh, he needed to get more of the white vote, so he literally picked Joe Biden for that reason. Like, th- and then you not hear about him describing Obama? I just said it. With, you know, we, what we have here is a, a mainstream, articulate, well, like, a, Trump's racism isn't uniquely bad. Because Biden was Obama's VP. The racist work, all that, I'm pretty sure you work with a few racists, right? Yeah, you know a few racists. Are, are, are they always racist up to your face? No. Are they calling you a nigger up to your face all the time? No. So this whole Obama worked with Biden thing, so Biden can't be racist is the most dog shit logic I have ever fucking heard. Complete dog shit. The lay person works with racists every fucking day. Every day. Not all racists are fucking gun toting, dick gra- little dick grabbing, American flag fucking waving, blue fl- blue ter- back the blue terrorist flag fucking waving hicks. Some races wear suits, ties, and a fucking smile. I'm pretty sure you know that. And, and if you if a if there's a party, you're going, yeah, you're right. So if they if you come across them and they're nice to you or apathetic to you, up to your face. Say if you got to go to work, and and, and your coworkers, and you got to get shit done. Does that make them any less racist or just in a closet racist? Think on that. Just just think on that. So people go, oh, fuck, Biden lies so, I mean, Trump lies so much. All right, granted, you're correct. Now we're going to call the balls and strikes. Trump's lying. Not uniquely bad. But he's corrupt. He is. It's not uniquely bad. You know why the Democrats didn't impeach him on like stuff like the emoluments clause? Because they're all guilty of it. They're all guilty of it. That's why they didn't impeach him on that. Oh, all right, Holla. I was just looking at a whole nother screen. Uh, one moment, people. I'll, we'll be right back. All right, we're back. Uh, yeah, I'm live now. Uh, they sent you. They sent you an invite. If anybody else wants to invite, let me know. But yeah, this is like, where, where was I? 
Uh, yeah. Okay, so also Biden has he said a bunch of dumb shit. Well, oh, here we go. Him lying about shit. All right. Many people don't know that Biden got kicked out of two runs prior for president because he plagiarized so bad. So bad. He was just taking people's speeches. I think he took like one of the Kennedy speeches. Even his build back better shit is from a whole nother platform in fucking Europe, like a party in Europe. And before you before the lizard brain op like you know clicks on. Before the lizard brain clicks on and go, but Trump, yes, Trump is also a liar. Not unique. He, he's not uniquely bad with his lies. He just fucking lies because he's he's a piece of shit. Biden isn't above being a piece of shit as well. This is what people got to fucking understand. Then you got Biden saying, my entire life I've been involved with the black community. He said during the, the one of the debates, right? My entire career has been wrapped up in dealing with the civil civil rights and civil liberties. By that, if he means being anti-busing, working with a segregationist, not no racial jungles, that or lying about you know being uh being jailed with uh Nelson Mandela in South Africa. Hey, all what's up? Adding you to the stream. What's up? Am I live? We yes, live. <laughs> Yo, you know what's been really annoying me, man? Yeah. Like, have you heard this? Like, like you seen that Noam Chomsky had did an interview with um the, the two of the people from the Justice Democrats, right? Yeah. And Chomsky's wrong. You know, people, you know, you like you can respect Chomsky in terms of his analysis of what the problem is. Cause he's very good at that. Yeah. But when it comes to solutions, he's dead wrong. And what's annoying me is that people are acting as if the people telling them that he's wrong are just complete idiots. <laughs> that's the thing that's really bothering me. It's like, I've seen a couple of people like uh, I've seen David Pakman take to have that take. Um, this guy, Zero Books, the guy who does that, of course, Sam Cedar. And I've gotten into it with Sam Cedar uh, on Twitter before. Oh, really? Yeah. It wasn't, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't disrespectful, but it was a it mm -hmm. was an argument because I was saying he was saying that he was basically trying to blame the people that didn't vote for Hillary Clinton as the reason why Donald Trump is president. And what I said was. You're not you're not placing the blame where the blame should be placed, which is on the Democratic Party and Hillary Clinton. Correct. So I disagree with your with what you're saying. I'm disagreeing with who you're putting the blame on. Mm -hmm. And it's so funny that they just let the Democrats and the DNC off the hook and they voter blame and voter shame. And the reason why Chomsky and the rest of these people can say, well, you know, we just got to suck it up because that's what I've been hearing. You got to suck it up. It's only two people. There's only two you can vote for. So you can't vote for Trump, vote for Biden. And, and it's like, listen, at some point that has to change if you want any type of change right now. And this is why, like, I don't want to hear shit that Bernie Sanders has to say. When I see his videos, I turn them off. Same. I don't want to hear a goddamn thing you had to say because when you had you did more fucking damage than anybody during this election cycle because people put their money on you. People who wasn't involved in the political system said, you know what? I like what this dude is saying. I'm gonna put my money on him. And what did he do? He he was so concerned about his friendship with Joe Biden. He said, fuck them. Basically. Yeah, he, yeah, he did. He pretty much threw his whole base under the bus, and yeah. like Nina Turner under the under the bus, Brianna Greyjoy under the bus. Right, and then, and then you sit up here talking. Now you want to talk about putting Joe Biden, um, to pushing him to the left, motherfucker. We had a pandemic going on, and you were pushing 
universal health care. How do you not win when you have a pop a, a position that popular? Exactly. It was like you just gave up. 80%. Yeah, he did. He bent the knee. But a lot of morons on Twitter say that his excuse is, well, he said he was always going to nominate the, he was always going to support the nominee, which I find is like a, a cop out. So just in case what happened, like, you know, what happened did happen. Oh, well, I was always going to support whoever the nominee was. So, you know, I said that. So you can't look at me and blame me, even though, come on, that's fucking bullshit. You, you, you shouldn't have bent the knee. But they didn't learn from 2016. And honestly, I think Bernie was just an op to sheepdog people into the Democratic Party. I mean, how can we think otherwise? The only person who's really calling it and the only person who's really commentary that I've been listening to is Jimmy Dore. Yep, and people hate him for some fucking reason. And well, there's a reason why they hate him. <laughs> there's a reason why they hate him because he's telling the truth. He called all of them sellouts. All of them. But see, that's what a lot of people are on Team Democrat. They're on Team Blue. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so they're not going to call out these people on their bullshit. They're going to sit there and just accept it. It's like, why are we listening to Bernie Sanders? Yeah, there's no, no reason anymore. There's, there's I would, like if I was on TYT, if TYT was really um telling the truth, and and don't get me wrong, I don't want to be a I don't want to bash TYT because a lot of people do that and throw them under the bus and blah. I'm not gonna do that. I'll just say I disagree with them on a lot of things. A lot of things. And one of the things that I disagree on is this team blue shit. Yep, blue no matter who, no matter how bad the Democrat is. The Republicans are scary, even though you're pretty much voting for a blue Demo a blue Republican, a Republican with a different color. And see what should have happened. It's, all right. We already know that, like they say things that we already know. We already know that it's Trump and Biden. There is no third option. There is no third option. You can vote third party, but you're not going to get any candidate into office as, as a third party. So we understand yeah. that it's Biden and Trump. We understand that. Our problem is this, it, uh, the problem with, with the, the progressives, I should say, is that by, um, not Biden, Bernie never pushed Biden. Like True. if, if he was going to drop out, what he should have done was this. He should have said, okay, I'm going to drop out of the race, but before I endorse you, these are the policy positions that I want you to, to, to push for and pass and once you become president mm -hmm. that's all that's all he had to do say listen you want me to you want my endorsement i'll give it to you but only if you give me this yep that's what and he should have done them, one of them one of them had to have been um a single payer health care system now biden would have tried to fight him like hell on that but this is where you have people to say all right if you don't want that, then good luck with um, becoming president of the United States. Yep. Because y'all don't like me anyway. You hate my guts anyway, and you're going to blame me for you losing anyway. Mm -hmm. So then fuck it. I'm going to be against you. And what would Biden have done? He would have had no anything. choice. He would have yep. had no choice. He would have had to. Just for optics alone, he would have had to have picked, said, all right, you got it. And then if he go, if he tells Bernie... Okay, I'm gonna push for this and I'm gonna sign it. Here it is. It's in writing. Then Bernie can at least go to his people and say, Hey guys, I know you don't like Biden, but if you vote for Biden, we'll get single payer health care. Yeah. It's see people see how it. simple that is? Yep. But don't come to me telling me I'm supposed to forget all of my policy positions and back Joe Biden, who is it for any of them, and put him in office so I get absolutely nothing. Because that's what fucking um, Chomsky and the rest of these people are saying. They say, oh, well, Biden is the lesser of two evils. What the hey. fuck I got to do with the T <laughs> cost of T? Like, I'm not getting anything from him being president. No, they don't They don't care about people wanting something. It's fear. It's, oh, the other guy's a Republican. Trump's bad. Trump says things. He He's going to destroy. I love the logic train of if he gets elected, now he will destroy the country. It's not that California hasn't been burning for the last, what, three admins already? <laughs> like, it's not it's fracking in the environment. Climate change just happened under Trump, and if he stays in 
office four more years, magically the world is gonna end or the country is gonna fucking explode in the next four years. But yo, how how about this? If Bernie really had some balls, you know what he would do? What? He would go to Trump and sure. say, if you put forward a single payer health care system in America, I'll get my people to vote for you. That would make too much sense. Then the, the Democrats' heads would have fucking exploded. Oh, yeah. Like, are you serious? And Trump, because Trump is not really an ideologue, he would he would go for it just simply because it would make him win. Yep. Yep. So this is the thing. It's like you can't play these games unless you organize, man. And, and that's just on the Democrat, like the, the progressive side of the Democratic Party. That's not even counting what we always say about our people. True. You ain't gonna win no battles. You ain't gonna you ain't gonna move the chess pieces around. You ain't gonna play three D chess with these people until you get organized. And I really think people only really care about organization. It's, it's pretty much build a brand, say some things that people want to hear. Then you know that's it. <laughs> then mm-hmm. for, for, fall in line. Don't yep. rock the boat because if things actually get fixed, a lot of people are gonna be out of a job or have to find something then else to talk about. Mm-hmm. Like, like, like TYT for example. Like, it, what would they be talking about if Hillary won? As hard as they pushed her, uh, like, what would they be talking about? They might have pointed out some of the bad things she's done because I when Obama was in. They were, oh yeah, Obama's bad, but these Mitch McConnell look over here. So it's a lot of these people have nothing, no existence. The Democratic Party. If they actually do win, how else do they fundraise? Yeah, well, TYT, um, it's, it's, it's a joke when you say you're going to push. When I hear people say we're going to push Bernie, um, um, Joe Biden to the left. In the middle of a pandemic, you couldn't get you couldn't convince people that single payer health care was the way to go. And you couldn't win against mm-hmm. Joe Biden, who doesn't stand for anything. In the midst of that, and you're going to give him exactly what he wants, which is your vote. Yep. And then after you give him exactly what he wants, then you're going to hold him to, to account? Are you right, kidding how, me? How, you can't. You it, lost it, it, all your leverage. Yep. The only leverage you have is the leverage that you have right now. But you're afraid. You're scared. Because what they're afraid of is if they tell Biden... We're not voting for you until we until you push these particular policies. And it doesn't have to be all your policies, yeah, but it's got to be the important ones. Mm-hmm. If you don't, if you're not willing to push these, we're not going to vote for you. You have to be willing to do that. If you're not going to do that, then stop trying to um, act like you want power. Yeah. Because it's obvious Bernie Sanders didn't want no power. He had he had he was in a position to break fucking Joe Biden's back like Bane did Batman. Yep. He had every... He was on the right side of history. He was on the right side of policy. He had the popular position, and he bent the knee because he didn't want to take out his best friend. So fuck all the people who voted for you. Fuck all the people who put money into your campaign. Fuck Mm -hmm. them. You don't want to be mean to Joe Biden. Come on, man. That's the shit that annoys me. It's like it's so bar- like this lesser of two evils now all of a sudden and within the progressive and left community has become the proper position now. Yeah, it's with in this fucking bullshit. Like that's why we have Trump. Yeah. The lesser of two evils. Like they you just want to repeat the cycle of what got you Trump. And if you get a competent Trump next time, <clears throat> then what? Then are you gonna run a fucking Joe Biden like candidate again? Like <laughs> Yeah, Joe Biden, and and the crazy part about it is, um, Joe Biden doesn't necessarily like if the the left was actually organized. Joe Biden winning is not a guarantee, mm-hmm. and you can use that as leverage if you know that if Joe Biden doesn't get you to vote for him, he's going to lose. That's leverage. Yep. So why? Are you not utilizing that leverage? That's why I said I've I've seen Bernie Sanders um, 
I think the last time there was a video of him on the Hill and he was talking to Crystal Ball talking about how he's going to push Joe Biden to live. I turned that shit off. <laughs> I'm not I'm not listening to anything you have to say, dude. Because yeah, nothing he says is relevant anymore. It's like, it's, right. you're, you're bent the knee, you fold it twice. Bye. Whatever he says doesn't matter. Bye. People ask him, well, how are you going to push Joe Biden to the left? He's not. And yeah. nobody is. Nope. Because you've given him your vote. You've co-signed. And, and as far as the, 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 the neoliberals are concerned, this is a, a mandate. They're not mm-hmm. looking at it as they're not looking at it as, oh, Trump was so horrible that people is going to vote for us no matter what. They're not looking at it that way. They're looking at it as neoliberalism is what people want. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be a man in the morning. Like, yeah. Look, Biden is not even hiding it. He's saying it during the I don't I didn't see the debate. It was a debate it, recently. It, it was a debate last night. The usual bullshit It's just Trump wasn't on a stampede like he was the first time. They had control over the mics, so he kind of, you know, I guess like uh reined himself in a little bit. Mm-hmm. But it was still the same bullshit. Still, well, the you same see bullshit. what Biden is doing during the debates. Like the last debate, I didn't see this one, but the last one, it was like Trump was attacking him on on single payer health care, and his response was, "Well, I ain't for no single payer health care. Yep. Yep. I don't want I don't want people to have health care. What are you crazy?" And people are still like. Oh, you gotta vote for Biden, even though he doesn't care, give a fuck about your health care. You gotta vote for Biden because Trump, Trump, Trump. Like, oh my god, like, you, one dude doesn't doesn't want to do any fucking thing. The other one is gonna make sure he doesn't do anything because his donors. Like, <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's ridiculous. And like I said, if Bernie Sanders, well, you know, I wouldn't even say that because I I personally believe that he shouldn't have lost in the first place. No, he he shouldn't have. He should have. After been he took the first one. few states, mm-hmm. he should have won that thing. But the, but he didn't do what he was supposed to do, which is attack Joe Biden. Just call, and it's not really anything that 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 is um up you know below the belt. You're just telling the complete fucking truth. The reason why Joe Biden doesn't support single payer health care system because he's paid off by the health care industry. Yep. Can't you say that? He couldn't even say that. He couldn't even make that argument. Why? Because he didn't want to offend or hurt Joe Biden. Then get out of politics. <laughs> yeah, right? What, what, what are you here for? <clears throat> Why are you running? What, what's the point of running in a primary if you can't attack your opponent? I would have tore his ass up on that. I would have tore his ass up on the wars that he endorses. I would have tore his ass up on the on the crime bill. I would have I would have made and another thing I would have did was made the point, which was the, the valid point. That he's the more electable candidate. Yep. He didn't do that. He right. totally ceded that argument to Joe Biden. Oh, Joe Biden is more electable. Okay, well then, why are we listening to you, dude? Yeah, why are you here? <laughs> why, why are you here? And it's crazy. It's like so now this is the this is the thing, um, the position that the left is in. Is that they not only do they have to vote for Joe Biden, but they have to vote for Joe Biden and get absolutely nothing in return for it. Yep, and expected and, to, to be be told to be quiet, lest the Republicans yeah. will win the, the the House and the Senate and stuff again. So you guys sit down and shut up. Don't say anything. And they could have voted for Joe Biden with a clear conscience had they gotten something out of Joe Biden. Yep. Nobody would have argued with the choice of Joe Biden on the left. Nobody. If Joe Biden said, all right, this is my olive branch to the to, to the base of the party and to the left. I'm going to push for single payer health care. We're going to get that through the uh, Congress and get that through the Senate. Nobody would have would have would have um, been mad at you had you said, all right, if that's what he's going to do, then let's vote for him. Yeah. Nobody. You would have got even Jimmy Dore wouldn't have even said would have had a, 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 an argument against that. Yeah. Wait, this is, this is what we're talking about. This is what annoys me. It's like these people, like the David Pacmans, the Sam Cedars, the TYTs. These people are what are so comfortable that they can make these, um, you know, the de- declarations that oh well, you know, we have to. I mean. The, the less of two evils is the common sense thing. Well, that's cool when you got health care. Yeah, right. That's cool when you when you live in comfortably. 
What about the people that don't the, the main people in this country that don't have health care during a pandemic where they getting forty thousand dollar bills? Me yep. up. Is lesser two evil working for them? Nope. And is that or that harm reduction bullshit argument? Oh well, it's, you gotta go with Joe Biden because harm reduction. Like, wait, what? How is that less harmful? Like, did nobody look at his fucking ro- voting record over the forty something year history he has as a senator? Well, see, that's a fucking thing. people. <laughs> how how much harm reduction are you really doing when you giving up your vote for absolutely really nothing? nothing? Yeah. Because yeah. you can make that argument. I would like that would be an acceptable argument to make if you was pushing him to pass your policies before he got your vote. Then I can say, all right, that's true. What you, what they're saying. But don't tell me that it's about harm reduction when you're not even getting none of your policies pushed forward, but you're still voting for the nigga. Because Trump, that's the other logic. Yeah. Logic train Trump. It all boils down to orange man bad. Yeah, that's it. That, that, that's it. Like I had like a like a, a I guess you call it debate with my brother earlier. He turned on to the fucking um other than the Giants getting their ass whooped, turned on to the, the uh, presidential debate, and he's like, oh, see, well, Trump, I'm like they're both fucking bad. No, because I'm and I'm telling them Joe Biden's fucking history. But why didn't you say anything about Trump? Like, what do you mean I have to say something about Trump to for what? To so you feel good inside about you knowing Trump is bad? We know Trump is bad. That's like me going, the sky is blue, right? Do I have to tell you the sky is blue? If you're not blind, if you have eyeballs in your head that can see, I don't have to tell you the sky is blue. I don't have to tell you Trump is bad because we both know he's bad. <laughs> right. But you're pushing Joe Biden like he's all this better than Trump when Biden has actual history of fucking people. Where Trump, yeah, he, he may have called black people niggas, but you know what white person, racist ass white person hasn't said that. And plus, Trump wasn't in office when he did it. He, he held right. no political power. He couldn't pass a policy where he didn't have to say he didn't have to call you nigga, but he could just pass a fucking vagrancy, some kind of like vagrancy or loitering law which tar- targeted black people, which is still in effect in California now. Uh Lee Camp just did a video about it where black people get arrested for just standing, standing, doing nothing but standing in on the street, a public street. That's that's worse than I don't, that's worse than fucking Trump calling somebody a nigga. Yeah, he calls somebody a nigga, but are they going to jail after it? No. Joe Biden was like, Well, I don't want my children to grow up in the racial jungle. Now we have the 94 crime bill where he bragged about stop uh, they they uh come close to stopping at hanging people for jaywalking meaning a lot of shit a lot of people getting locked up for petty bullshit in that bill you know what <laughs> you know what the funny part is like calling trump trying to point out that trump is a racist is like being in a um you know like a a, a fish market and calling the cops because you saw a shrimp yeah. <laughs> yeah, like this is what we we all of them is fucking racist. So why are we even concentrating on that? Yeah, what you got to be concentrating on is what policies are you trying to get pushed and what policies are you trying to get mm-hmm. passed? Not whether he's a racist or not. Fuck Donald Trump on that level. Fuck Joe Biden. Fuck all of them people. None of them is your none of them is your friends. Why we keep thinking Trump is not your friend, but Joe Biden ain't your friend just because Trump ain't. Exactly. Neither one of them is your friend. Neither one of them wants any of your policy positions passed is going to benefit and help you in your life. None of them. Exactly. So then the only thing you have is leverage. That's the only thing you have. All right, nigga. I don't like you, but I'll vote for you if this gets passed. If you push for this and you put it in writing that you're going to push for this so I can hold you to account and take your ass to court if you don't. Mm Mm-hmm. Then I'll vote for you. You got my vote if you pass this. Then it's not all this crap about who you like and who you don't like, who who's the racist, who's not the racist, and all this dumb shit. But see, that's that that's something that would be if if there was an actual organized political party in this country, and there's not. There's no there's no opposition party to the Republicans. No, because they they all Republican and people fall in, fall on that my team their team bullshit. Yep, it's not about policy; it's about team. Are you voting for Team Democrat or Team Republican? Yep. 
Now, if you ain't, if you don't want either one, then you get shamed for it. Oh, well, the other guy's gonna win. They're gonna destroy. It's like, come on, they already fucking fucking everything up. He's trying to get something, but the other person's bad. But don't you want health care? Because what's gonna happen is even if Joe Biden wins, we're still gonna have an eviction crisis. So you're still gonna have millions mm -hmm. of not a couple thousand, like a million people on the street. Yeah. What the fuck is he gonna do about that? Nothing. And by the time Joe Biden is even sworn into office, what about the stimulus? Yeah. Because Joe Biden doesn't get sworn in until what, January? Yep. Like so, mid, mid to late January. So Trump can technically say, well, since I'm not going to be president, I don't give a shit. Pretty much. Then and all then the now nobody's going to get any stimulus. Nobody's going to get any um. PPP or any of that shit. No, none of that stuff is going to go down. And we're in um, October now. Yep. So it, it, it's crazy, man. It's like, that's the thing. Like, Bernie Sanders did more damage than anybody during this this whole. Um, I think Emoji's here. Yeah, I just saw him. I was just asking oh, if he yeah. wants me to put him on. All right, let's see. Yeah. Um, <laughs> He did more damage, man, because he was in the position and he was he I'm he was here. firmly positioned. What's up, Yamoja? He was firmly yeah. positioned to be the um be on the right side of history. And it's like everything, this whole thing, his whole issue was um single payer healthcare system, Medicare for all. We're in a pandemic. It's not. It's like the perfect environment for him to thrive. But instead of him doing it, he gracefully bowed out. And now that he gracefully bowed out, now you want to give advice. Now you want people to listen to you and what you think. That man, I don't fucking care what you got to say, son. Don't care. Yeah, it's like I'm tired of the sheep dogging. Sorry. Yeah. I'm I'm not gonna oh, oh I gotta register the Democrat because Bernie said like no I'm Bernie be quiet sit down and like what's his name um Jimmy Dore has made this point and I agree with it if you're not gonna criticize your own side if you're not gonna criticize Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer then what the purpose it doesn't matter if you don't take um big pack money doesn't no, matter it doesn't doesn't because you're still going to go along and get along yep. with the established Democratic, um, you know, the Democratic establishment, which is Nancy Pelosi. And we all know that Nancy Pelosi don't give a fuck about her constituency. Nope. Not one bit. She even said on TV, the speaker is a powerful position. And uh, it's, 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 I'm not saying I'm powerful, but it's a powerful position. Like, well, bitch, if it's so powerful, why aren't you actually doing anything to the people you claim to be feeding <laughs> All right, you got uh, California has a ridiculous homeless issue, ridiculous homeless issue. But what have you done to do any? Like, what have you done for them other than oh, look at my refrigerator, expensive ice cream? Like, <laughs> yeah, that's it. And, and that's another issue with the fucking squad, where they don't challenge Nancy Pelosi. It's like they would you were voted in for to do one job. You had one job: challenge Democratic Party leadership. And what the fuck do we get? Oh, we get a stream from AOC to playing a fucking video game. Yeah. <laughs> Telling you to go out and vote for Joe Biden. Joe, yeah. I got That's going to help me so I much. I got a question for y'all because y'all be like two perfect people to talk to about it. I'm, um, I'm going to do a show soon. And I'm also I'm writing it too, but I'm going to do a show for people who don't read. Uh, um, I was thinking about how you would hear people like one of the things is that they always say is like you yeah, vote and then hold the politicians accountable. <laughs> and it just occurred to me, right? I was like, okay, motherfucker out. Like, how do you hold? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, how do you hold them accountable? Because I know what accountability means. You can mm -hmm. have an accountability partner. You could like snitch on yourself and say, hey, I made this mistake. I just want to come apologize to you like a man and make amends, right? So, how do you uh, hold a politician accountable? Let's just start start there first, and I ask my other one. But seriously, though, like, notice how they never answer how to hold them accountable. It's just like, no, nigga, vote. And then when they end, hold them accountable. Like, like how you talking about the Jimmy dude? Well, we're going to write him a letter, a stern letter, and say, nigga, you wrong, and they're going to listen. Like, so how does the average American, 
seriously though, like how do we how do we hold our politicians? Well, I'll be Without honest with you. I'll give you a hypothetical because this is not going to happen, but it, it it technically could under right. if we had leadership. Um, you have to have direct um action. Like they the the people literally have to go to these politicians and protest against them. That's the only way it can happen. But see, the problem with that is, and this is this is it's a trick that your representatives play on you. And this is, and I'll use the conscious community as an example, or black so-called representatives and leaders as an example. See, what it's really doing, and 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 from the standpoint of the leader, is it's absolving the leader of his role and his responsibility and putting it on his constituency. That's basically what it is. So Bernie Sanders is not going to fight for you. So what does he tell you? Oh, well, you all got to get out there in the streets and fight for yourself. So know what the fuck I need you for? <laughs> right, right. Just like with all these poly, if you're, poly- if you're my, my representative and you're telling me, well, I can't really fight against Nancy Pelosi. I can't fight for the policy position that you want. But once their neoliberal candidate gets in, what you guys got to do is get out in the streets and fight. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. You're sitting right next to this bitch. Word. You ain't doing nothing, but then you expect us to see. That's what you call they absolve themselves of responsibility. The reason why nobody wants a nation and I'll, I'll switch to our side. The reason why these people don't want a nation is because of accountability. It's not this vague, ambiguous leadership where nobody knows who's responsible. No, in a government, you have departments and you have people that's responsible for those departments. So if something doesn't happen, guess what? You get voted out or fired. You're going to where I'm, you are going to where I'm going next. What do you think, though, uh, Mr. Mr. Wilson, about the uh, holding holding our elected uh, our elected officials accountable? Like I totally agree with holism. I would like to see it a step further. Like I don't know if you guys watched the Godfather movies where dude didn't do what he was supposed to do, and he woke up with a horse head in his bed. So indeed, you know, if, if shit like that happened, they would know people are serious. I'm not saying you got to go and try and kidnap motherfuckers, but it has to be some kind of like real like uh consequence for them fucking over the people like honestly people should when the politician doesn't do what they want them to do withhold your support for them mm-hmm. and even if you have to band together organize and run your own candidate against that person exactly and and see what 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 it seems like the average black american voter don't understand is that we such in a weak position there is no leverage because week i mean year after year statistics keep showing that niggas is going to vote for democrats and it shows by how they even how they even market to us now it's on yep. sports because they know niggas in sports i'm talking about they got rap videos strippers like it's so dis- it's like literal disrespect because they know they're not going to give us no money but we just got to make them feel good and, and pull on their heartstrings and make them feel guilty. And we got their votes. And then we ain't got to do nothing for them because we'll say, oh, no, I'm mandated by the black voters because 99% of them niggas voted for me. So they agree yep. with me. Stupid ass. Yep. It's just so that's, what Joe, that's exactly that's what, what Joe Biden's conclusion is going to be. He is not going to come out of this and say, wow, the left really helped me out. He's gonna nope. come out of it saying, "No, we got a mandate, and neoliberalism is what the people want. They not, they don't want single payer health care. They don't want free college tuition. They don't want a living wage. They don't want any of these policy positions that the left is pushing for. They want what I want, which is nothing." Yep. Now, now here's the second part of my question, though. And this one, this is something when I like flip my flip my uh, uh, conscious switch on. Let's say for lack of a better term, I uh, started digging into it and 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 I learned about the Congressional Black Fucking Caucus. <laughs> My question about these motherfuckers is, what are they doing and what is their purpose? And before I go, I uh, did some because because I told you I'm doing a piece on it. Mm-hmm. And looking at the uh, year end report from 2018, that's the latest one that they got. When it says what the C- the uh, CBC has done. 
I'm going to just give you a couple bullet points. And I, this is verbatim. Criticized, criticized the Republican. This is what they like done. Actually. <laughs> I'm, I'm so serious. I'm not making this shit up. Criticize, I ain't even got it in front of my face, but I remember a couple. Criticized the Republican tax bill. Um, uh, what, did it, what did it say? Damn, man, because I want to be verbatim, but it said, what did it say? Uh, Critic, uh, 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 wrote a resolution for to censure Trump's shithole comments. And I have to look up what censure means. C-E-N-S-U-R-E. Do you know what that shit means, y'all? It literally means to ask permission to say that something is bad. Like to ask permission, <laughs> like that's like that's like you literally that's that's like Wilson, that's like you slapping me. And then I have to come and ask you, like, hey bro, do you do you mind if I go tell somebody that you slapped me and that's through the phone? And that, literally. Oh man. This this is what they have down. And then it has something like, oh, they uh urged, they urged HUD, the uh housing uh H U D, they urged yeah. HUD. To live up to the um, fair housing mission, urged oh with a God. letter. I'm like, this is embarrassing. Oh my but oh, man. I, I said enough. Like, what do y'all? They've been around since 1971. And my question, because these are literally like, we should be in they hit. We should be on they throats more than anything, because these motherfuckers are part of the Congress, and you are literally supposed to be for us. Yep. What the fuck are y'all doing? Because they, nobody says nothing about them. We always point to these white dudes and, and, and talk about Obama when he was in office, but these niggas been there. And they still there now. They they're gonna be there tomorrow. What are they doing? And why don't nobody talk about it? Why are they talking about go vote? Yeah. Like pretty much they they should be like, I guess, broken up or something, or whoever in their districts just to need to stop voting for these fucking assholes. They haven't done anything. They they're pretty much there. It's like putting a painting on your wall. That's it. Is a hole on the wall. I'm gonna cover it with a painting and fucking forget about it. What do you do about the hole? Well, there's a tree and there's a bush and Bob Ross wrote his name on it. But the other, that's, that's it. They don't they haven't done anything. And people just need to just stop voting for them. Make sure they just get broken up. Some vote somebody fucking else in because it's and people like you're right. People should be saying something about the CBC because you rarely ever hear anybody say anything Yo, about it we, peace Chima. we sit up here we sit up here and talk about charlemagne we sit up here and talk about ice cube we sit up here and talk about these nba we talk about lebron james these but and then we complain about like well they're not our leaders we actually have people who's supposed to be our leaders like when we say who our leaders is like i'm talking about not al sharpton not none of them ms not none of them yeah. talking heads and pundits we have people who are actually on capitol hill supposed to be for us they need to be fired at like i'm talking about dome shots like seriously what the fuck are y'all doing simple as that we never hear from them and even worse i ain't seen no i ain't seen no commercial nigga like in my life i've never seen a i've never seen a congressional black congress commercial ever ever i i seen a uh it's crazy because i seen a uh, recently too i seen a um a whack ass like facebook ad and I clicked on it, and, and, and the first thing that, that it said is, we're here to ensure that all people have, and I just stopped reading. The fuck you mean all people? What are you talking about? You the black, ugh. Let me stop. Let me stop. Yeah, like, that, that was the reason. Like, I love the, the, the concept of what Killer Mike came up with, with the um, online banking thing. But once I heard it was, you know, for blacks and Latin X, I'm like, what the fuck, man? I'm, I'm just tired. What, can we do anything for our, ourselves? Nope. It, yeah. Anything? Yeah. When we, because these people ain't giving a fuck about us. If, if, if the Latin X community comes up with any type of institution, do you think they're going to, well, let's include black folks in it? Nobody ever does. Ever. But we always thinking about other people and, and, and including them in whatever we going through, man. That's why I'm saying that that line, what was it? I forget which um commandment but that was, but about to hit it, hit it and quit it. Yeah. We definitely need to learn that, man. Hit it and quit it. Like don't fall in love with these goddamn coalitions and alliances. What they do is go off of our backs. And what they know and what everybody knows, including black people, is that we don't want to accept it, is that we always the burden bearers. We always the healers of the universe. We always talking about love and light and peace and blessings. Shut the fuck up. How about we start saying fuck you? I mean, one yeah, that, time. That's where I'm at. Up. You that's can never, you can, 
you can I'm, I'm talking about i didn't been in spaces where it's supposed to be for black people and a and and a, and a blue black person to say well what about what about these people what about nigga what about them we got to fix our problems everybody problems is getting fixed amongst themselves and we be the only ones and they're coming right off our coattails and going to the sunlight well yep. while we still sick it's just it's just insane it's insane we're pretty much like the biblical Jesus bearing the cross and constantly dying for everybody else's sins. But when it comes for who's going to save us, good luck, nigga. Mm -hmm. Ain't nobody. Nobody's thinking. Of, and I want to ask you, what do y'all feel about this 50 cent thing? I, I posted how I felt about it. He a troll. Like, if he just shut the fuck up. And just let the that show power run, with, you know, with the the new version that's just milking the fuck out of it. He did nobody nobody will remember him, so he got a troll, so he can stay in the spotlight along with his fucking show. No matter how stupid he sounds, no matter ridiculous he is, he he needs attention. But I swear, like if nobody paid attention to Fifty, he probably just evaporate. And and too though, he's he he's definitely trolling. But he's being honest. And Fifty is just on what Fifty is is being vocal about. How I don't want to give a percentage, but what it looks like, a good ninety seven point thirteen point one three percent of these black celebrities and black wealthy people are they for themselves. As long as they see that, because like 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 I'm not a pocket watcher by any means, but whenever I hear a Ice Cube or a Killer Mike or a David Banner talking all that black shit, and it's like, all right, but then at the end of it, you like selling your merch. You telling people to buy your CDs. You telling people to subscribe to you when you literally have the resources and not just your own pocket. You know people that could help black people yesterday, bro. Fucking yesterday. Shut the fuck up. And you tell us to go vote for these people. Vote for these people that's gonna keep on kicking our ass while you still bubbling off of people saying, yeah, he's speaking the truth, though. He's speaking the truth. I'm about to go buy one. One of his flags, man. Fuck you, man. Straight up. They're they're pretty much higher levels of the DVD hustlers. They they they're higher levels of they they're pretty much the conscious conscious community DVD hustler information circuit fucking debate circuit motherfuckers just with some more money. That, that's all that is. And, and, you know and again, thing, I, I don't mind. Before you go, holla. I don't mind that you get your money. Get your money. But fucking do for your people, man. Don't just be talking about that shit. Do for your people too, man. Not just feeling good because you helped out a couple people because they probably do some great things for, for certain individuals, right? I don't know what they do. But I'm talking about get it together, man. Come come together. Straight the fuck up. It's just, it's just crazy. Go, go ahead, Holly. Yeah, what I was going to say is that one of the things, one of the reasons why I, I stay away from the news because most of the time if I get my information is online and I go to certain forums and, and whatever are certain print not print but online magazines and online news sources that i find are credible i usually get it from that and and i try to get it from basically independent sources not people that's on a team because you know like you got certain um news sources this team democrat and certain news sources this team republican so the only way you're going to get the truth is really by looking at both of those and looking at the middle, the people that's independent, and you can kind of figure out what's going on. But one of the things that bothers me and what pisses me off is why do we need news outlets in this country? What's the fucking purpose of having a news outlet if you motherfuckers ain't going to inform people and tell them what the truth is? Why do we need you? Because for once, I would love... I've never heard some a, a, a broadcaster or newscaster when they have these politicians and these these right wing idiots online just simply ask them this question. Donald Trump always talks about make America great again. What period is he referring to? That's, that's... Most of them will say that he's referring to the golden age of capitalism, which is between 1950 to about 1970 something. Why doesn't any of those broadcasters ask them, what was the marginal tax rate during that period? <laughs> I've never heard one of them. They sit there and allow these people to just misinform the public and they never call them on it. 50 cents is crying about some 62% marginal tax rate. Do you know what the marginal tax rate was during that period? 
91 fucking percent. And what yeah. they don't tell people is nobody's actually right. paying 91 percent because you, once you factor in the itemized deduction standard and itemized deduction, once you factor in all the tax loopholes that you rich people have. Then it go. then it gets reduced down to the effective tax rate. Yep. Why doesn't anybody tell people that? They just allow, oh, 91%. And then everybody loses their goddamn mind without them explaining the context of what that means. It's a marginal tax rate, you idiots. That's not what you're actually paying. Because once they get all the deductions and all of the loopholes and all of the shit, you're going to, as a rich person and as a businessman, you're going to be paying much less than that. Yep. And when they when they reduce the marginal tax um, tax rate, when um, George Bush Senior and and the rest of them got into office, wealth and income inequality exploded. What you never hear about on on mainstream media? No, at, at you're not going to hear anything about that. Why is Jeff? People are bragging that Jeff Bezos might might be the first trillionaire. That's something to brag about. That's fucking horrible. That a man could be a trillionaire and his work has got to piss out into a cup because they don't have brakes. Or get sent in the ambulance because they don't have a they don't want to put an AC in the facility. So you just pass out right the fuck where you're standing. The CEO of a company is worth a trillion dollars. Everybody that works for that company better be a fucking millionaire. I don't care if they sweeping up shit. If you are part of that company and that company and your CEO is worth a trillion dollars and everybody in that company should be a millionaire. Yep. You should be paid in full by being a, a, a employee of a trillion dollar company. There's companies that, that I, I, I keep uh, mentioning this company. I keep forgetting the name of the company, but it was like a hedge fund company. Not even nowhere in the vicinity as much money as um, Amazon is making. And every year, their employees, as a bonus, would get $100,000. Could you imagine if you work for a company and you get a $100,000 bonus at the end of the year? She. If you said something about my company, we'd be fighting in the streets. <laughs> Look, you better not say shit about my company. My company, $100,000, that means that every year you can buy a house. Yep. Just off their bonus, you can hook yourself up and become an entrepreneur. And this is like, and they don't have, and that's everybody. The CEOs don't get no more than the workers do. Everybody gets a hundred thousand dollar bonus. Shit, most and, people wouldn't even go off to be entrepreneurs. They'd just be comfortable right there. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You got a you got a company that's paying you a hundred thousand dollar bonus at the end of the year. Where you going? Yeah. You ain't going nowhere. You're going to do your bid and retire. <laughs> that's about it. You're going to do a bid and retire. Yet this motherfucker has a company that's potentially going to be worth a trillion dollars and he can't even give his people a living wage. And we're bragging about that. Like I said, man, the writing is on the wall for this place. The writing is on the wall for this place. And and people got to start making decisions about what they want to do in the future because this is not the place to be. I wish I wish we had stayed in Rwanda a little bit longer so we could have got stuck there. <laughs> and I wouldn't even have to been in America. I would have been stuck in Rwanda during the pandemic. They handled it better than here. They supposedly a third world and they handled it better than America. <laughs> Yep. Even my coworker, I was like, oh man, you get a passport. Cause they always complaining and bitching and like, fuck Biden, fuck Trump. I hate all these moms. Like, bro, just get a passport. There's a whole world to see. Fuck out of here. <laughs> just get the fuck exactly. get the fuck out of here. You ain't gotta stay here. I was get just a talking, passport. I, I got a homegirl in South Africa, man. I think unless um unless we all come up with somewhere to go together next year like once it's able they're not open yet though and i ain't got the funds yet but i'm gonna just 
I'm, I'm gonna save us specifically to go and visit South Africa just to go, just to get to the continent. If I go by myself, I, I ain't gonna go somewhere where I, ain't, you know, where I don't know anybody. So yeah, I'm gonna go to I'm gonna go to Durban. Man. I didn't see how they live and everything, and I, I said I know somebody. I'm gonna go there for like a week next year, like as soon as possible. I, I suggest going. I mean, South Africa is another spot that I want to go to. Of course, I always suggest Rwanda because I just I just think it's a nice transition for African Americans. But anywhere, just get out of this country, get a passport, exactly. go somewhere where you can get to know what normal people are like. Because this shit is not normal here. Nope. This is not normal. They did not have to tell the people of Japan. They didn't have to mandate them and give them a government mandate. To wear mask, they wore masks because they're intelligent, and they're not to- total uh, selfish dickheads either. Right. That's the reason. And I told people the reason why Republicans don't like wearing masks is because what they fail to tell you is the mask is not for you. The mask is for other people. Mm-hmm. And Republicans don't have empathy. So there's no re- there's a, a real good reason why they don't like wearing masks because it has to do with helping other people. Yep. You don't want other people to catch what you might possibly have, you fucking idiot. But my but they don't freedoms. care about other people. They don't care about other people. It's all about them. Until something happens to them, then it becomes a problem for everybody. Uh, yep. Well, that's exactly why I like like 70 something percent of Republicans now support like a form of Medicare for all because they're getting fucked by their right. own system that they thought right. was just going to fuck everybody else. Same thing with the police. Bunch of motherfuckers hate, but like I, I see a, a bunch of Confederate flag waving motherfuckers in PA. But when you talk to them, yeah, I fucking hate the police because now they've been so bad that they leaking over to you and starting to fuck with you. Yep. That's all. It's all only when it affects them. Like they're they're willing to put homosexuals against a wall and and put them in front of a firing squad until one of their kids be- becomes a homosexual. Then yeah. now all of a sudden, well, we gotta this. We gotta look into this. This is yep. <laughs> it's all about it's all about them. Chima says, um, we don't want to create disincentive to work. Remember that bullshit? Yeah, I remember. I used to, oh, I made God. that point all the time. It's like. You're telling me that an extra couple of hundred dollars is going to um, keep somebody from working, but a trillion doesn't? <laughs> so if the guy's worth a billionaire, she, so then Jeff Bezos shouldn't be working no more, right? He's yep. totally disincentivized to work. See, it's, it's this one-sided bullshit. It's like it, the rules don't apply to them. It only applies to you. Yep. Because I made that argument all the time, man. If a person is working 40 hours a week, five days a week, Monday through Friday, that person is a productive member of society. Why? They're working. They're, you got to get um, transportation to get to work. So you either um, mm-hmm. you're on the public transportation or a car. You got to get food when you're there. So you're buying from the, 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 the food um spots and whatever you got to get clothes to wear they're participating in the economy by having a job yep they are moving the economy about so i don't make fun of people who work 40 hours a week no matter what job they have i don't because it's so funny that now this is you're an essential worker now just a hot minute ago you was making fun of them Yep. Oh, you if just you work at McDonald's. Flipper. Oh, you a de- you a burger flipper. Oh, you deliver packages. Da 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 da. You was making fun of these people. Now all of a sudden they're essential workers. They were always essential workers. Mm-hmm. But that's the thing. It's like everybody wants this this classism. You know, everybody wants to pretend that they're better than the, than the next person. And that that scratches upon that scratches all over the spectrum, not just um, in terms of wealth and finance, in terms of ideology too. Like everybody wants to pretend like they're better than the next person because it makes them feel better if they got somebody to look down on. And I have an exact opposite philosophy when it comes to that. First, people that when I go to a job, you know who I I I get 
very friendly with sanitation workers and security. Yep. Because if anything happens, they're going to let me know. Mm hmm. Hey, don't if go they in the hear, bathroom. If they hear a conversation or whatever, they're going to let me know. Oh, yo, so look out for this. Da, 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 da. I always know everything that's going on in the company. But that's dummies true. look down on them. Every person, when a person comes over to pick up my garbage, I say good morning. Let them know that they're a human being. Oh, yeah. Because that garbage going to pile up and uh, you ain't got a sanitation truck to take that shit to the dump. You at work, somebody act a fool. Well, do you really want to be, be put in that spot to have to calm that fool down or the people that's hired to do it? So. Because I've had it like security guys have I've been in um companies and the security guy will catch me like coming from lunch. He say, yo, yo, Mark, is is there a package? Are you getting a package delivered here or is or, are you expecting something? And I go, no. Nah. Yeah. Well, like I think the time that he did, he said, I was like, yeah, I'm expecting something. He said, oh, OK, if it's you, I'll do it. He said, fuck that other dude. <laughs> he ain't getting shit. And that's how it is. It's like you you treat people right and people will treat you right. Yep. You know, that's my advice. If you in if you inside of a corporation or a company, if you're a black person, get to know the security people, get to know the the sanitation people, get to know the, the people who are essential workers. Cause those are more important than knowing the CEO. CEO yeah. don't CEO don't know shit about what's going on in his company. Nope. That's my advice to you. Take that with a grain of salt. No, you're right, though. Like, essential workers have pretty much have become the bullet sponges, like, infantry for the fucking army. You just become fucking bullet sponges. Before, it's like, oh, yeah, you know, fuck that grunt. He just going out there. But is, is the lieutenant on the front lines? Nope. He in the back giving orders. Mm -hmm. Then when it comes to here, motherfuckers, middle management above, ah, get the fuck out of here. But you can't do the, the base person's job. You have no clue what the fuck they're doing. You just sitting at a goddamn desk all day. It's called selective capitalism. It's like, I love how people love capitalism one minute and then hate it the next. It's like, listen, a, <laughs> strip, a stripper is providing a service. Mm -hmm. So how do you purchase her service and then put her down? Yeah, right. Like you, she's providing a service that obviously you want because your ass is in the strip club. Mm -hmm. But yet you want to put strippers down. It's like that's what people do. It's like everybody wants to put other people down so they can push themselves up and make themselves feel better. Let me let me let you in on a little secret. When you're a secure person, you don't have to do that. True. That's when you know somebody is secure and when they're not secure. I don't have to put somebody down to make myself feel good about myself. If anything, you should be trying to help people and pull them up. Yep. Instead of kicking down the ladder. Oh, I made it. Well, let me just kick this fucking down. That way nobody else makes it. Like, why? why? <laughs> like, why? Mm -hmm. Like, I, I just hate... My biggest pet peeve is just people that make it hard to live. Like, life... It's hard enough. There's literally places on the planet that anything and everything can kill you, like Australia. Koalas can rip your fucking face off. Mm -hmm. So knowing that, why make average everyday life harder for the next person? There's there's no reason for it. Well, like I said, the, the reason is you got insecure people who don't feel good about themselves, so they have to abuse other people to make themselves feel good. It's like why there's people whose philosophy is and and this is parents parents have children and they don't want their children to have a better life than them they want their children to go through the same shit that they went through yeah there's parents that actually think that way why the fuck would you want to have your kid go through what you went through don't you want your kid's life to be better yeah but see, that's that selfish shit. You feel like, well, if he didn't suffer, then then I had to suffer. And that's not fair. You know, it's perfectly fair, you moron. <laughs> but 
Or like how people, oh, well, how dare you want to wipe away student debt? I had to pay for it when you went. Exactly. And the, the people that are saying this, they pay like five grand a year exactly. <laughs> to go to school. Like, come exactly. on. Exactly. They, they don't, like, why other people not pay when I had to pay? That's the dumbest shit I've ever heard in my life. But you got the motherfuckers well against like 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 Chima said socialism or Medi- like Medicare for all example. Why should I pay for somebody else's hospital? But I'm like you 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 realize this is how insurance works, right? Right? Everybody pays insurance. Mm-hmm. So you, every time you pay your premium, you paying for somebody else if they got into an accident or whatever. You are essentially paying for somebody else's fucking you know. Yeah, we care. all buy into it so we can all benefit from it. That's yeah. how, that's the, the very definition of insurance. So is insurance socialism? <laughs> Don't say that too loud. The motherfuckers' heads will explode. Socialism? That's Marxism. But see, the reason why they get away with it is because they we don't really have news. We don't have reporters. We don't have people that will take these people to task when they say bullshit. Like when nope. Donald Trump says socialized medicine in a fucking debate, <laughs> the reporter should try, whoa, 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 Mr. President, what that is a hundred percent wrong. Yep. But does that happen? No, they just let it fly because all the reporters there is to, you know, have um, a nice hairdo and some good makeup. Yep. They're not there to, to, to take these people to task. So you allow people to just say falsehoods in a debate in front of the nation and you don't say a goddamn thing about it. Nope. Socialized medicine. That is a oh, my God. Every time I hear that, it just drives me crazy. We hate socialized medicine, but look at the VA. <laughs> like, yeah, look at Social Security. Look at Medicare. Medi- yeah, all of these social are they? Are those all socialized too? Well, well the worst and, part yeah, about they that, are. though, the, the whole worst part about the socialized medicine thing is, and what? Like, how is that a bad thing? Even if it was that way, like, how is well, it they, bad to take care of your people? You like, yeah, just ridiculous. and it's going on right now. Medicare. Is right now. Yep. So the, the argument is stupid. It makes no sense because there's nobody sitting there. The only person is going to say anything about it is the candidate, and most of them is too punk to do it, like Bernie Sanders. Yep. He'll just sit there and just you know allow this shit to be said and not take the person to task. I'll be like, Joe, why don't you shut the fuck up? Shut up. Because you're getting a check. Yep. That's the, oh, you don't have no ideological problem with the concept of a single payer healthcare system. The healthcare industry is paying you, and that's the reason why you don't want to say anything. Friend. Pretty much. Or like when they was at the debate, and every time Joe Biden said some bullshit, Bernie's retort was, Come on, Joe. Come on. Come on, Joe. Yeah. Like, oh, that's that's getting them, Bernie. That's really sticking it to him in a fucking debate. Yeah, not like, correcting uh, him and letting it, letting the record be straight in front of the goddamn world. Yeah. Come on, Joe. Come on, Joe. And I, oh, it drives me crazy. I can't. I can't. Because there was one time, I, I believe um, it was Whoopi Goldberg. And she was on The View. And she was mad because Bernie Sanders said something nice about Fidel Castro. Oh, God. Totally ignoring that Obama said the same exact thing that Bernie Sanders said, but mm-hmm. when Obama said it, she didn't have a problem with it. Yep, she was praising that shit. Bernie Sanders says it, now all of a sudden she's outraged. And so somebody on the panel asked her, well, didn't Obama say the same thing that Bernie Sanders said? And do you know what her answer was? And it drew, I swear, had I been in the audience, I would have leapt on the stage. <laughs> she said, well, the American people don't understand nuance. Oh my God. And I said, what? So wait a minute. You know. So you so you know that it, they're saying the same thing. And you sitting here pretending as if you're offended. And, and if they don't if they don't nuance or they don't know nuance and you have a microphone, what should you be doing? <laughs> Oh, I can't believe! Oh shit! I was sitting there. I'm like, I can't believe this. And she and she said it, and nobody made the the connection that I made that you're intentionally deceiving yep. people. Yep. Somebody should have smacked that bitch with a mirror. Just smacked her. With, not even held her. Just smacked her with the mirror. 
they don't understand nuance. nuance. Well, bitches, you got the microphone, so if you understand nuance, explain it to them. And That's what the, you should be doing. I, I, the view. I fucking hate the view. It's fucking bold. <laughs> like, yeah. Why but is anybody view, going in? The view in represents the average mentality of the average um, soccer mom in America. True. True. Uninformed and, and emotional. Very true. That's what they do. They appeal to the emotions instead of informing people and letting them know exactly what's going on. Is it that difficult to explain the difference between a marginal tax rate and effective tax rate? I just did it in 30 seconds. No, it's, it's, it's not difficult. But then if they explain it and some and like, you know, people's brain cells start like clapping together and fucking firing off and shit. And they, oh, wait. Well, why are these motherfuckers millionaires and shit? Like, they, people start asking questions but, then the light is on see, them. That's the, but that's the real job of the media, though. Because yep. if, if like the average person was privy and really understood what was going on, then America would have an uprising. See, but it, but as long as like, and that's the part of capitalism too, is keeping somebody at the bottom. And now, obviously, it's all all Americans outside of the quote unquote one percent. But as long as they can see that, oh well, niggas is getting killed by police and everything else, and so black people are the real burden bearers. But if news really reported real news, then America as a whole would go into uprising. Then the one percent would be the ones talking about we gotta leave this country, we gotta leave this mm -hmm. to the poor people. We gotta get the fuck up out of here. So as long as as, as as long as we can still get shiny things, get fucked up loans, get homes that we think is ours, then the average American is fine. And that's the yeah. whole goal of the media, really, is to keep us with that with that shade, with that glossy eye, and then just sleepwalking. Really, we know that. Yeah, they're supposed to be the fourth branch of the government, but they're just another uh, puppet <laughs> misinformed. Oh, no, they are the fourth branch of the government. Think about it. <laughs> I guess the misinformation branch. <laughs> the misinformation branch. What's the latest CIA talking point? Oh, well, you know, we can coop whoever we want. And uh, everybody in the socialist country is a dictator. Somehow. I like how uh, with Bolivia that just stopped the coup because they have actual election integrity. And people are like, well, see, that's why you got to vote for Biden. Like, no, that no, that's not a you can't connect those dots. You, you can't you can't do it. There's no election integrity here. So you, you can't stop, you know, the oligarchy or whatever the fuck or the one percent from getting what they want at a voting booth when you can't even have, have access to the voting booth. And every election cycle, every fucking one, there's issues with the ballots, either people getting purged off the voter rolls. People's votes getting flipped at the machines. I don't know how many fucking videos we've done seen now with people in the booth pressing one option and they're just switching to the next. Then for some reason, it's never brought up in a debate. None of the candidates ever fucking talk about it. Then when they do, they get fucking ostracized. It, 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 it's just fucking sickening. Yo, you mojo. What up, though? You there? Um, yes, sir. If you want, when you when you do that um, Ten Commandments thing, I'll, I can join you if you want. If I'm if I'm available, I'll definitely be there. Because we ne we definitely need to talk do about it. that Ten Commandments Let's do it. of yeah. Yeah. nationhood. I like it. I like it a lot. Like 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 we can do it ASAP. Like just let me know when. Because I know you said you off in the next few, few days. Let's um shit yeah. We can knock that out. Like, and it's really simple. Uh, are we going to read the long form? The uh, long form of them? I think we should. Since it's going to be yeah, a video. definitely. We can, we can read the short form and then we can elaborate on each one. I like so that it. way people people understand. I'm down. I'm down. We could do that like ASAP. I'm talking about. But I, time. I was I was I was, was kind of surprised when I saw. Um, Mr. Wilson on, I was like, damn, they must have pissed you off because he did like two <laughs> videos today. <laughs> Somebody must have pissed him off. Yeah, that was, you know, thank my right. brother-in-law for this video. <laughs> oh, you had a, 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 a conversation with your brother-in-law? I, I guess you can call it a conversation because he just rehashing MSC, MSC talking points. And I'm like, 
no biden or oh, but but what about trump i'm like we know trump is bad why do why have to say bad things about trump for like what's the point when we're talking about biden but you said all the stuff about biden because it's, it's fucking so true childish, it's, facts. Man. it's so childish it's like first of all they make points that they really don't have to make it's like we already know that there's yep. two candidates we know this that's not what our issue is our issue is how come you guys didn't push these guys that you want us to vote for to pass policies that would actually benefit us? Nobody would be fighting about the less of two evils if Joe Biden was pushing for a single payer health care system. Because they, they don't care about policies. Nobody cares. Like I think I like the podcast, like nobody cares about policies, it's about my team, my team, my team. People are upset with Trump because he's masked off about the shit that's already been going on. He says mean things. So look look at this shit. Look at the fucking policies that's happening and look at the, the Democrats in, ineffective for, for any fucking thing. But Trump is mean and he said things about Mexicans and kids at the border. Yeah, we know he said these things, but what the fuck are you gonna do about it other than go, we gotta vote for the other guy that's also bad? Gotta go. Yeah, it's vote like for, you're not oh. voting, you're not telling people to vote for something that benefits them politically. Nope. You're not telling them that. What you're telling them is orange man bad. We got to get him out of office. Vote this guy in. He ain't going to give you shit, but at least he's different than I, an orange man. Yeah, he doesn't say mean things on Twitter. He doesn't tweet meanly. That is not a winning formula. No. And 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 what people don't think about is, think about all the people, because Bernie Sanders was getting a lot. He was making more money through donations than Joe Biden and anybody yes. was. Yes, he think had more money than all, DNC. Think about all of those people that donated their small donations to Bernie Sanders. How do those people feel right now? I know they want refunds. Cause I fucking would. And you're gonna go out there and and energize him? Bernie Sanders ain't getting no huge crowds. Nope. Because it wasn't about Bernie Sanders for them. It was about the policy positions they felt. He was pushing policy positions that would benefit them. So that's why they supported him. So mm -hmm. once you're not pushing the policies, why are they why are you requesting their support? Yep. It's that simple. And and so they don't Yeah. Go ahead. Uh people don't realize like that's what 92 to 100 million people that don't vote and mm -hmm. every fucking election every 4 years the number just gets bigger. Yep. Gets bigger. Because they keep getting their heart broken. They keep yeah. putting their, their faith in these people who don't give a shit about them. Ultimately, you can't have, like I said, you can't have comfortable people crafting policy for uncomfortable people. It never works out. Nope. Because at the end of the day, they can they can afford incrementalism because they're taken care of. Yep. Their health care is fine. It's funny. My representative has health care that I don't have. Yeah. Isn't, isn't that crazy? Oh, he, Trump caught COVID and Trump is fine now where the average person catches COVID. Well, that's probably a motherfucking death sentence, whether you survive or not. <laughs> yeah. Either you die from the, the COVID or you die from the looking at the goddamn bill. Yeah. But he's good. He's straight. Socialized medicine worked fine for him. Bad for everyone else, though. How dare you want Bernie that Sanders stuff? has health care. Mm -hmm. The squad has health care. Yep. So That's if it I... don't work out for you this year, hey, you know, just wait a minute. You know, hold on. Eventually we'll get there. Well, you can yeah. say that when you have it. Yep. Oh, you're homeless? Oh, we'll, we'll try and put that on a ballot sometime next year. Hold on, though. Pragmatism. I want you to tell me if Joe Biden is against a policy with an 80 percent approval rate, Joe Biden doesn't have to defend that. Let Joe Biden say in a debate, I'm against the will of the people. Just say it. Make him say it. That should be your point in the debate. Yep. Bernie Sanders point should have been in that debate. Make Joe Biden tell you that he's against what the public wants. And let's see if he wins. Let's see how electable he is once he does that. But see, that's when you're trying to win the game. Bernie Sanders is slap boxing. Yeah, pretty much. Come on, Joe. Come on. Come on, Joe. Yeah, he's slap boxing with his friend. He ain't trying to win. Come on, Joe. 
So sit down, shut the fuck up. I don't want to hear your analysis on anything because I already know what your analysis is. Vote, vote for Biden because orange man bad. That's it. That, that, that's that's all. That's only thing the Dems have to run on. Well, as Nancy dangerous put- president in the history <laughs> of this, 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 this <laughs> same old stump speech <laughs> bullshit. But no, no actual like effort or like no actual evidence that he's the most dangerous. None. He's too incompetent to start a new war. Like everybody's like, oh, he's gonna start World War Three. This motherfucker palling around with North Korea, who was everybody was fucking scared of. All the dictatorship they're gonna. Do. You know what's funny? This is the funny thing about it. Trump is so easy to manipulate. Mm-hmm. He's so easy because he's an e- he has an ego. He's a narcissist. Why do you think? Kim Kardashian has gotten I don't know how many people out of jail. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Because she's a celebrity. And she plays, she knows that he loves being around celebrities, so she plays to that. Mm-hmm. And by her doing that, she's been able to get people who were um, unjustly put in prison out. That's why I don't have shit to say about Kim Kardashian. She, she did what the CBC should have been doing. Right. I don't have shit to say about her because she's doing she's using her position to do something good. I wish more people would do that shit. That's why I'm not I'm not saying shit about Ice Cube. Ice Cube oh, God, is sincere. The fucking, the fucking Ice Cube thing. This shit like I don't understand. It's just hypocrisy to the nth degree. You got all you got fucking Cardi B. You got all these celebrities tap dancing for the, the Democrats and nobody nobody has an issue. Ice Cube go, I want a contract for Black America. Oh, wait. I, I will say this. Let me let me defend Cardi B. Who has been the only person to push back on Joe Biden about single pay health care? I, I guess Cardi B I haven't Cardi really B. <laughs> Isn't that oh, some man. now you talk about some sad shit? Oh yeah. Not one political pundit, nobody that's had an interview with this guy has pushed him on a single payer health care. But a fucking rapper so, does it? Yeah. Yeah. She, and, I, and I saw the interview. In the interview with her, she was actually pushing him on single payer health care. They didn't call her a Russian agent? <laughs> <laughs> she's not part of no, the Kremlin? No, she's a celebrity. <laughs> so, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. But, like, the Ice Cube, like, you know, it's it's, it's whatever with the, that contract shit. Neither party give a fuck. But... They upset. Oh, he's our Trump supporter because he spoke with one of Trump's representatives that contacted him when the DNC told him we'll handle that after the election. Then when it got out that the DNC said it and it was becoming a problem, all of a sudden now, oh, here's a 22 page bullshit that's no guarantee for black people. And are you, why didn't why are you going to Roland Martin? Why you, the Trump and did you know Trump did this and and Trump did motherfucker? Shut the fuck up. This is why it's important to. You got to understand that you are not your ideology. A lot of times what you have to do is you got to look at the spirit that the person is coming in. And Mm -hmm. I'll give you an example of that. At my job, the coolest cat at that job was a right winger. (laughs) Me and him politically were not on the same page, but he was one of the nicest guys. Me and him used to talk all the time. And even and even if we talked about politics, it didn't get contentious. You yeah. know what I mean? And he but he was just a cool dude. And that's the way I feel about like um Ice Cube. Ice Cube has the right heart. Like I I, I don't like if anybody calls Ice Cube a sellout or a coon, what the fuck is wrong with you? Are you insane? Ice Cube is a coon. Come yeah. on. Yeah. Now, now, my problem is who he surrounds himself with, who he's talking to is the yeah. problem. And the fact that he's not in a circle of people that's going to point him in the right direction the way he needs to be. He's not in our circle. I doubt very seriously if he's in a nationhood circle no, where people not. are pushing this stuff. So you can't blame him. He's only acting off of what he knows. True. But I, I will say I don't, I don't doubt his intentions. I don't doubt that he sincerely wants to help black people in this country. The problem is he's not around the right people. Yeah. He's around the Boyce Watkins and the, you know, I'm, I'm not going to say their names, but you know what I'm talking about. The black talking heads. Yeah. Yeah. 
the, the militant integrationists and the black power Americans. That's who he's around. Yeah, the wrong this, whole, this whole and concept no. of a fucking contract with America is just ridiculous on his and face. You, and you know, and see, and that's what I have like a hard time with is the people who lead who lead in our people the wrong way and it's mask as it's just the best thing to do you know what i'm saying like like they just talk about just ingratiating deeper into america with no and i'm like bro where's the evidence i'm gonna tell you i'm gonna let y'all y'all gonna be the first to hear this one but what i call it is the sam cook syndrome the change gonna come you know what i'm saying like it's like <laughs> Like, like, I know that's funny as fuck, and it's meant to be funny, but it's real as fuck. It's like, how long is you going to keep on trying to beg these people to be nice to you? It's like, it's like you dressing up, you putting on your favorite outfit, your your best smelling cologne or perfume or oil, what whatever, getting your best haircut, getting it braided, and shiny. Like, nigga, look, I'm beautiful. I promise I look good. You know what I'm saying? It's like, no, that change is not going to come. It's just not going to going to come at these people keep on pushing it and our people love it. It's crazy how much we love it. We love that a change don't come shit. Man. It's like, stop it. It gets on my nerves. And these same people at the end of their speech say, yeah, and then I'm doing another master study. Uh, <laughs> it's the deal for uh, 13 99 go to this, 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 this. And it's like, stop it, man. It just, it's really hard not to go in on them, but then it just looks like, oh, you just banging on black people, doing black on black stuff. And it's, a, it, it's just a cold it, it, it puts us in a cold position, really, though, where, where we got to listen to these people and just shake our head because it's well-to-do black Americans who think that they're doing the right thing when it's like, no, y'all need to be on these BIO. Let's get the hell away from these people. How about that? It's like, why is that not a good idea for these people? I don't get it. It's a better idea to keep on raising your kids to be scared, to be different, to, 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 uh, to, to kiss the ass and suck the dicks of these white people as opposed to saying, you know what, I think it might be a better idea if we just like try to develop our own somewhere else. I don't understand. I really, it's just crazy. Yeah, it is. Uh, I think uh, Tima has a question for you, uh, Yamoja. Ask it, please. It's uh, what do you think of people like Angela Rye and Don Lemon, these uh, cable TV talking heads? Um, I think I think that they just push. I just think they just push liberal liberal talking points. It's just yeah, basically they just keep pushing the same liberal talking points and just keep us on a hamster wheel. Just keep us doing hamster wheel activism. Keep us going around in the circles, and that's what these people. Because that's something I can't remember where I said it at, but but I was like, wow, while, while uh, black folks have been doing pretty much since since the sixties, since they killed all the leaders. In, in between 1960 to like 1969 when they killed everybody all of the panthers all of the I mean, malcolm x mlk once they did that they start pacifying us they say yes y'all can integrate and once they start doing that then we start being more ingratiated with them but 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 while while we while we've been doing hamster world activism they've been doing hamster world pacifism that's why you see kamala harris now and you got dumbass negroes like charlemagne the guys oh. up there talking to Don Lemon saying, oh, I'm not voting for Biden. I'm voting for Harris because she's oh the age of change in the thing. Seriously, though, and they just keep on in this hamster wheel where we will. I don't give a fuck if Kamala Harris was running for president. I'm looking like, and what? So what? Like, 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 look at Obama. He was blackity, blackity, black, had a black wife, not an old ass white man who would yep. be like, who, who would be the first husband, whatever the fuck that is, right? <laughs> like, he was blackity, blackity, black, did nothing when he had the. When he had the majority and everything, he did nothing for our uh, people. Let's just keep it real. Yet, yet he's always seen as the Messiah. Obama could 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 come out and say, "Hey, y'all, it would be a good good idea if we go back to Kenya, where my people from." Guarantee niggas a sign up for the BIO today. If Obama just went out and said something like that, really, though, but he's not. Obama comes around when it's a when it's a Democratic candidate and he's trying to get a vote or. When it's a professional sports team, mainly black, saying that that they're gonna boycott the rest of the season, then he'll pop up. That nigga oh, ain't yeah. doing nothing, man. And you can't say nothing about Obama. This dude basically is walking on water, and he's not doing anything. Never have did anything. So we just keep being pacified, and, 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 and that's the agents of change that they are. They're the they're 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 the agents of saying keeping shit the same. 
fucking agent to change. They ain't changing shit. Knock it off. They are the agents of the status quo. Don't rock the boat. Period. Well, yeah, you you right. You can't say shit about Obama. Man. Then the funny thing I found it, it, is it when he got elected, like his first hundred days, they had some fucking site up. He got the most things passed out of everybody or all the other presidents. But then when you question it, you're like, well, why didn't he get this passed? Well, Republicans, Republicans stopped him from doing this. Republicans stopped him from doing that. But like, how could you get? How could you have the most shit passed, but then also be stopped at the same time by the Republicans? Like it, it, it makes no fucking sense. But since he was just black and niggas is politically fucking babies, they just saw a black guy, black face, black family in the White House. Now all the Negroes have made it. And he served two terms. Oh, the white boogeyman is back again. The white man is that's, Thanos once again. Bro, but <laughs> that's, lit- that's literally enough for us, though. Just that symbol. Literally, for some of us, Kamala Harris being vice president is enough. That's enough. Who cares which about is, the policy? Who cares? Which is insane. Oh, another it thing is. with fucking Kamala. Like, even my brother-in-law said this shit. You know how all, all of everybody was like, you shouldn't be locked up for weed? Everybody's against being locked up for fucking weed. It's just a plant, right? Kamala, I bring up the fact that Kamala locked up more black people, especially black men in California's AG history. He goes, well, should they have been smoking that weed? Wait, all of a sudden now? Smoking weed is bad, but your ass smoking weed and you constantly saying how it should be fucking free and recreational and illegal. But all of a sudden, when since Kamala's versing the fucking Trump, oh God, is she just doing a job? She should have just locked up all those. Like, don't what get the it. Fuck? Don't get it. Don't get it twisted, bro. No, <laughs> Kamala Harris coming out listening to trap music, doing her little two step. You oh, know what I'm saying? Don't get it twisted. She's blackity blackity black. She's going. She's now, m- mind you, I'm not in the camp. I mean, it's disgusting to me some sometimes when I see certain types of interracial relationships, but I don't give a fuck about that. However, when you going home, when you when you talking about being being the leader of black people and doing right for black people, then you have to look at the track record. And the track record is the track record. Like you said, she is married to a white man. She's going home and talking to a white man about her politics and about yep. her I- ideology so therefore when you see how she's treating her own people you have to question what the hell is y'all talking about like like yeah this is just a regular relationship just, that's just real that's not enough they're worried about who she fucking or nothing that's just real you can't tell me that you are people and then looking at your policies looking at your track record then you see who you married to oh yeah i see what you about i don't give a fuck if you come out eat chicken with hot sauce and talk about try to act like you all black when you're in public knock it off but like it, it's it, it's so bad that even when people with faced with actual facts about the track record, all of a sudden they become mental gymnasts going for the gold. Well, come on, just doing a job. Was her job to also keep innocent people in jail or keep people feeling, for prison labor? Like, feeling better, feeling better is more important than facts for a lot of us, man. Yeah, that, unfortunately, that's been evident. That's been evident. As long as we uh-huh. feel good, are you kidding me? Like straight yeah. up, it's a sister in the it's a sister in the in the White House. What are you talking about? Period. There's, nothing the to There's nothing to talk about. There's nothing to talk about. She black now, then, but even her own black ass father was like, "I ain't fucking with that bitch." Her father even, fu- <laughs> even Isn't her father ain't fucking with him. Isn't it crazy that um, they've managed to convince people. That voting has nothing to do with policy. Oh yeah. When that's the only thing voting has to do with. Like people will vote for somebody because they like their suit and their haircut. <laughs> but not vote for them because they have policies that would actually affect your goddamn life. It's insane to me. I'm gonna tell you what is exciting though. Seeing, seeing our people like, like shout out to the African superstar. Shout out to Shona. You know what I'm saying. Seeing our people who actually 
making that um, individual transition, even though like I'm way more for us actually coming together and, and starting our own stuff. But seeing 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 people and being able to talk to y'all and like be a part of their journeys, and, you know, that shit do keep me keep it, it keep me grounded and sane because I would yeah man I would, I, I would be on my fucking mind going through this shit feeling like I'm just by myself so there that's that's probably the uh, main upside right now at least is, is having the PIO and having y'all to sit up here and talk this shit and get it out with some people who more than understand but want to do something about it like straight up because this shit this shit is crazy this shit is fucking nuts man. Hello. I'm still here. I would just I just want oh, okay. to say that just 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 shout out to BIO like straight up. And then uh, hey 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 man, I got a cold silver lining though. So there's this Moorish brother here. He's a younger cat too. He well, well he's younger than me. He in his like uh, late twenties, I think, mid twenties, late twenties. But I remember meeting him when I was um I was in a transition from like disengagement with some local organizations because like, while I'm all for, like, doing stuff here, you know, to do it right here, people, but when you're not even doing that right, I can't fuck with you. I just can't, like, like, like where my mental at now, like, I just don't want to waste my time on it. But um, I was talking to him, and he was on some more stuff, and I just spit it to him, like, yeah, but, you know, look, talking about how it just keeps us separate, how, like, I just leave it there, right? And so, when I posted the post with, with the uh, BIO shirt, he had hit me up from my story and was like, BIO with a gang of question marks. And I was like, yeah, bro, like, 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 like that's who I rock with. You know, and he had said something else. So I'm like, we should talk about it sometime. And he was like, yeah. And he had made a different post talking about more something, something, something. And I said something along the lines again, like, yeah, I would like to do this and do that. But you got some people who are, who are so like, some of our people are so simple minded that you just calling them black or saying that they saying that they this they don't even want to commune with you because you call yourself black and don't say African that makes it even worse and he was like yeah you you got a point there and that's just some ridiculous shit how literally some of these people you can't even say you black or else they don't want to even listen to what you gotta say and that's some of the dumbest shit but but the silver lining was he was like no man we gotta sit down and talk because I would like to bounce some ideas off of Cause you know they on some oh we more American shit. They like almost the worst time talking about oh, we American and shit. Just stop. I just I keep there. trying to explain to them that you live in a society right now where like we can't say that we can't get along because we're getting along right now. We're just getting along under somebody else's context. Because when when you take the train and you swipe your metro card, it doesn't matter whether you Muslim. Whether you're Hebrew, whether you're Moor, whether you're an atheist, all of y'all are paying money to get on the train. Yep. And when you start thinking of, in terms of that, then maybe you can start connecting with intelligent people. Because some people are so dogmatic, they're never going to get it. But what I believe is that I think that people who want to know will know. Like, if you don't want to know, you want to stay ignorant, you'll be ignorant. But if you want to know... It's out here for you to know. And I really believe that. It's like we we have to start talking to people and letting and seeing making these connections for them that they're not necessarily making because we're the only ones who's gonna do it. Nobody else is doing it. Yep. Because like I've I've explained to people who are not into nationhood and who are not even into cultural conscious stuff, and we've had conversations, just a regular average black person. And I and I use the analogy of the landlord versus the tenant. And it resonates with them because they understand that. You know, if you're a tenant, the only thing you're concerned about is your apartment. But if you're the landlord, you got to be concerned with everything. The electricity, the gas, the the maintenance, the the sanitary, everything you have to be permits. All of that shit, because your realm of responsibility is bigger than the goddamn apartment. And it's the same thing with nationhood. 
we got to start thinking like landlords instead of thinking like tenants. If you think we're, we're having a landlord conversation with a bunch of tenants, that's what the problem is. Yeah. People don't want that responsibility, though. I like guess somebody right. leave it for somebody else to do. Yeah. Rather than have a house, just get an apartment. Yep. That way you don't have to deal with all the responsibilities that comes with having and owning your own house. It's the same thing with nationhood. People don't want to people would rather let the white man take care of things and they just sit here and rent in America. What we want as nationalists and African centered progressives, we want our own house. And that's a different conversation. And it's a different type of person you're talking to. Speak, and as long as you realize way. that, then you'll be better. If you try to, it's like if you're trying to push the square peg into the round hole, you're going to constantly be frustrated. Now, Go ahead, now, what, and like this is more of a conversation for definitely for offline, but like those, those, those of us within the BIO who really like, like, like we have to start like moving without people who, who just want to sit and keep on talking. You know what I'm saying? Like like actually yeah. coming up with a plan, even if it's just a, like a business plan type that we could start. So because I want I, I want to start like like literally trying to talk to governments who we're interested in or talking to like Rwandan officials just to get ideas from them and start talking to people about like, hey, how much is land over here? How much do y'all got? Like, are you are you interested in like are like is your people? Because I know I actually was just talking to this dude who I used to work with, I used to supervise him. He's Sierra Leone and he be going back sometimes. And I asked him, Do you have family in the government? He was like, I think so. Most of my people live in the village, but I do got people all over. To, like actually start talking to these people so we can get more ideas. But coming at somebody, that's just like I'm coming at you and I'm pitching you my business and you're like, all right, cool, let me see the business plan. And I'm like, uh, the, 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 you know what I'm saying? Like, but we need to really start getting serious about, and I know this is the same conversation for here, so I, I don't want to go deep into it because, because I know I ain't saying nothing that, that, that y'all ain't thought about already, but like, I'm, I'm down to start. Like, we just got to start making some, some moves because I'm, my mind is like completely. I think we, we need to start getting numbers. We need to start getting more people pushing more membership and getting more because if once we have that, mm -hmm. the way that I look at it, we have something we can go to a government with. Yeah. We can say these are the amount of members that we have in our organization. These are the amount of architects we have. These are the amount of dentists right. we have. These are the amount of doctors right. we have. We can make that argument because we have those numbers and we can come to them and say, this is what we're dealing with. What we're trying to get is a piece of territory so we can take all of these people and that they can put all of their energy and their, their talents into this um, territory so we can establish something for diaspora Africans. It makes it a lot easier to have that conversation when you have those numbers. I did, I did. So that's why the like my main thing is trying to talk to people of like mind people. And to be honest with you, it's sort of like, I believe that if you were to poll 100% of black, of the black people here in America, and you were to find, ask them the question, how many of y'all think we should have something of our own, a nation of our own? I think that we would be probably polling around the same as Medicare for all. Mm -hmm. That's real optimistic. <laughs> I really do. I'd like if I if you were to ask, it depends on how you ask the question. True. True. If you ask the, if you ask black people, should we have something of our own? The majority of us is going to say yes. Now, when you get into details, you might get a little contention. But that's 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 why you have to have people that can see the bigger picture and can make those broad strokes and present the argument the way that it is. Because the argument isn't the details. The argument is the broad strokes. Should we have it? Because for me, arguing about nationhood is sort of like arguing about, let's say me and you have an argument about the Powerball lottery. And I'm sitting up here or having an argument about what I'm going to do with the money that I haven't hit with yet. Yeah. 
That's that's a dumb conversation. It's like I'm saying, oh well, see, I was gonna do this. Like you ain't got no money, nigga. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's the same thing with nationhood. It's like for us to have a, an argument about nationhood and what we should do and shouldn't do if we get the land. Uh, that's that's like me having an argument about my Powerball winnings as far as I'm concerned. Ain't nobody cut no check for me. So that's what it is. We got we to gotta see the big picture. And the big picture is should we have something of our own? Yes or no. And if you put the question that way, you're going to get a high percentage of people who agree with you. Yeah. The argument is going to come when you get into the details. <laughs> yeah, you want to go like Africa, you, nigga? Africa don't like us. What you talking about? Exactly. Man? If you get into, let's say, you ask the question, should we have a Christian African nation? Then all of a sudden, <laughs> you might get you know like 90%. You know what I'm saying? It's like like you have a, a, a contention of people who's down and a contention of people who's dead set against it. So it's all about how you frame it. But I do believe like as far as the BAIO is concerned, we need to get more people of like mind involved in this organization. I think the commercial is going to help. Yeah. Because it's real simple. Not complicated at all. Real simple. Yeah, like y'all like the commercial a lot. It was a fire. Sound official as official as fuck. Yeah. Right, 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 right. It's a good time. Has it been posted everywhere on, on all platforms? Yeah, it's been posted everywhere on BAIO platforms I, and, I and wish, everywhere I on wish, my platform. <laughs> I wish I wish everybody would. Fucking be posting our shit, man. Yeah. You there you go, man. That's a constant source of, of of contention for me. It makes no sense. Just just, just makes no sense. The People most scared, easiest man. thing you can do. The easiest thing you can do. My brother Hollow got a business slinging hats. If I can't afford to buy one, I could at least post so other people can see that this brother got some African gear that's dope. God damn. Simple shit. Fucking retweet, repost. So it's just yeah, whatever. <laughs> I don't want to go in on it too much, but yeah, don't make any sense. Uh, what if we uh like play the commercial before, uh, if we do like a video on YouTube or something, or like um, if we like do a podcast, just play like the audio of the commercial. That might be able to help too. Well, I'm way ahead of you on that one. Oh, all right. When I do when I do my videos, I'm gonna put the commercial at the beginning of my videos. And it's only a minute too. It's like perfect. It's not long. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's like yeah. it's easy. It's easy money. And if y'all want the like, um, can you download the file, or do you need me to send you the file? Because I'll send it to anybody who wants it, like the the raw file. Yeah, I'll and that take way it. you can use it. Yeah. Um, I think uh, I don't know if I have it already with the with the video and everything. Oh, you have it because I emailed it to you. Right, 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 right. Yeah. That's what I'll I email it to um, Mr. Wilson, so he yeah, can have it. or anybody that. else that wants it. Because, like I said, my stuff is your stuff. <laughs> like, because somebody asked me, "Yo, can I use your phrase?" I'm like, "Man, please, anything that I say, use." What I'm gonna do? Take you to court? <laughs> <laughs> you can't use the term "Black Power American." That's already trademarked. I'm sitting up here. Y'all, I'm over here on the West Coast, and it's two in the morning. Y'all ass. It's birds. Oh, I'm wide away, awake, man, because I was asleep. <laughs> I'm wide awake. But I'm getting ready to get off because I got to get something to eat. Same. I got work, unfortunately. Yeah, but it was a pleasure, gentlemen. Thank always, you guys for coming always, on. Absolutely, man. Shit, we seen you on there. We ain't going to let you <laughs> ride out there by us over Hollywood. I like, mean, Hollywood. Was just chatting. He was like, "Hey, I think Black Mr. Wilson on. Fuck it, let's, let's chop it up." <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. Y'all have a good night and a good day. I love y'all. Peace with it. Love you too, you bro. Too. Peace. Peace. Thank you guys for tuning in. Until next time. Peace.